the community room one. Sorry. Yes, we uh, are in committee room one, and before we start the meeting, I'll just have to read a few um, housekeeping um, uh, comments. The room does have automatic cameras and sound tracking uh, in the ceiling uh, with microphones. Uh, given this, I would like to remind members of a couple of things. Please continue to speak clearly and do not whisper. Uh, keep other sounds to a minimum. Uh, whispering, shuffling of papers, typing loudly on keyboard, might bring the camera on to you. Uh, please also bear in mind that uh, the microphones are very, very sensitive. Might pick up conversation in the room, including informal remarks. And finally, please refrain from using a mobile phone as the camera zooms in to not only will capture the speaker, but also that whoever is sitting next to it. The last two points particularly important is we're live streaming the meeting on YouTube and a recording of, of, of it will be available any time on that channel. We're not expecting a fire drill this morning, uh, so if the alarm should sound, please follow officers out the door by the side of the room, uh, one here and one there, and um, uh, meet in the nearest fire exit, which will be down the stairs in the foyer, onto Duke Street, uh, where you will make your way to the location assembly points in the ground of the uh, cathedral opposite. Um, also, it seems to be quite a good time now to uh, uh, just get uh, approval of uh, altering the agenda. We are going to be taking agenda 5.2 before 5.1. Uh, could I have someone to propose that? Uh, Council Judge Professor and Council Gardner second. All those in favour? In agreement? Yep. Okay, thank you. So the agenda will be um, altered accordingly. Uh, we go to agenda item one membership, apologies, and substitution. Emma. Thank you, Chairman. Apologies have been received from Councillor Mark Stevenson, for whom Councillor Chris Pond is substituting, and from Councillor Thorogood, and also from Councillor Lynette Bowers-Flint. Thank you very much indeed. And welcome to Councillor Pond. I guess it's been a long time since you are sat in this committee, so it's nice to see you. Thank you. Uh, agenda item two is the minutes. Could we just check for declarations of interest? Declaration of interest. Oh, yes, please. Uh, uh, Councillor Jowers. Hey, um, I think it is. Uh, item 4.1, <clears throat> I was the cabinet member when this came up um, and a separate issue came up related to this and also I was on the uh, Colchester Planning Committee when an application came in. So although I have no pecuniary interest, I do feel that it would be better for me to sit in the back row whilst you debate this. I have some very close knowledge of it and I've made decisions on it in the past. That's very good of you. Thanks so much for uh, informing us. Any other declaration of interest? On the uh, Greb Mendley School, I'd just like to uh, mention that although it is in tendering and I'm the deputy leader there, I've had no connection with the, um, I've had an invite to a public exhibition, but no other involvement into the uh, making of the application, but I thought I'd just recall that. Uh, We'll now go to the minutes, 27th of January, they're fairly lengthy. Um, I don't know if you have a chance to look at them. Uh, I've skimmed through them and it seems to be fine. That's quite a long time ago to uh, remember them. Are you okay for me to sign them as a true record? Agreed. Great. Finally, uh, an addendum has been circulated. It's mainly typo. The only one that um, uh, it's of some relevance will be the uh, application of um, Bentley School item 5.2, where there is some changes to the recommendation. But I'm sure that uh, Rachel will go through that when, uh, when we get to it. Uh, agenda item three is public speaking. <coughs> Emma? Thank you, Chairman. For item 4.2, Ashledon Quarry, we have Mr. Andrew Clark, the agent on behalf of the applicant, speaking for the application virtually. For item 5.1, Land Off Remembrance Avenue, Bewley, Chelmsford, we have Mr. Michael Ward, the agent on behalf of the application, speaking for the application. Uh, for item 5.2, Great Bentley Primary, we have Mr. <coughs> Andrew Clark again, 
the agent on behalf of the applicant speaking for the application. And as discussed, we'll be switching 5.1 and 5.2. Okay, thank you. And just to, uh, for the record, we have no speakers on the um, um, application on uh, 5.4.1. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so we got agenda item 4, 4.1, Fairfield Farm, Fordham, Womanford. It's in the hands of uh, Mr. Uh, Teddy Burns. Over to you. Thank you, Chair. Just try and get this share screen thing up. This is a retrospective plan application, which is for the composite facility to be provided on the northern half of Womanfoot Airfield. Just to start off, yes, there is a typo error which is showing up on the addendum, but one raised this morning, which I would just draw your attention to. If you can go to the last page, which is page 125. Uh, first paragraph, which starts the Waste Planning Authority. We just delete the second sentence from as A down to the report. Just take that out. Thank you. Okay, thank you much. So I'll take you through the slides, folks. So go from there. I'll describe then site. So the application site, as I said, is just to the north of Wormingfoot Airfield. Um, get our little pointer out. This is the village. This is Fairfield's farm on the right hand side, which comprises an active farm complex, the Fairfield Farm Crisp factory, and anaerobic digester, which is all located on the eastern side of the former airfield. The perimeter tracks for the airfield go around in a triangle, and the application area is up in the northwest corner. There are a number of footpaths around the site. So you've got to switch the pointer off each time, I presume. There we are. So this is an aerial shot with the Fairfield Farm on the right-hand side, the anaerobic <coughs> digester showing up, and the perimeter track, which the, the applicant would access Fordham Road, come in along the road here, and then hit the perimeter track and take it round to the application area. There is now a uh, secondary track then would come down and cut through where the gliding club are based, and we'll come back out on Fordham Road, just to the north. The application area is situated here. A large amount of uh, public footpaths in, in that neck of the world, and the application area is where the pointer is. The re reference point is the little reservoir, and just to the east of that is the application footprint. So a footpath runs right in front of it, and there are footpaths running off to the north on both sides. <coughs> and along the access track is also a public footpath, and there are numerous footpaths in that vicinity. The application area is on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side is just a quick shot of what was previously refused in 2010, 2011, under a previous application for composting on that particular site. So the footprint is virtually the same. The only difference is that this application currently before us, they would have the windrows where they would put the shredded uh, compost for maturing on the field at the back, which would be in this location here. This is the aerial shot, uh, probably the, probably about a year ago, I would, I would think, down, looking down on the site. And this is where it was currently operational <coughs> as a timber recycling operation by coaches to skips. This is where it came to our attention with vehicles, movements, and activity on the uh, footprint. And that's what drew our attention to this particular unauthorized activity going on on the site. So it was an overspill from Coaches to Skips operations with the timber being imported here, shredded and broken down, and then presumably sold off site. 
footprint of the development, if uh, approved, would have the stockpiles, the shredder in the main body, and as I mentioned earlier, the compost in windrows where they put out in rows to mature before turning, self-maturing, and then taking off the market would be on that open field area to the north of the particular site. So the footprint is on the right. This is just a shot from looking north to south, just to demonstrate it isn't in an isolated location. Fairfields Farm Development is off on our left, and you can quite see, clearly see the perimeter tracks where the operations would be accessed from. So if we look at that in particular, this is parked here, and this is looking across, looking northwards. So Fairfield Farm is on the left of this picture, and it'll be, as we're looking, it's on the right here. So I'm looking to the north, that's Fairfield Farm. The access track runs up in front of those trees. Just carry the photograph across, continue up, and you can see the development area as it currently sits on a high point elevation in the countryside. This is from the access of the development looking south towards Fairfield Farm. You can probably just make out the uh, anaerobic digester tops and the Fairfield Farm complex. That's the wooded shredded material which was located within the site. There was the shredder and the wood stockpiles when it came to our notice. That is when it was tidied up. It was a lot, uh, a lot fuller than that beforehand. One of the cultures to skip lorries coming down the access road to get access onto Fordham Road when it was seen. And yeah, it's a hard, compacted surface, but in the summertime, you can see it generates a lot of dust. This is the footpath that runs in front of the development. There's a pedestrian which we employ just to walk past. No, that's the pedestrian just walking up the footpath when I was there. The site is behind with a bund in, it's got bluey gray, green plastic meshing for wind blow, and you can just see the tops of some of the timber which was when it was originally seen. The landowner occupies this piece of land with straw bales, they've got some machinery planted at the top, and you'll see now on one to the other pictures, they've got a number of other um, storage areas which they use for their, looks like fencing and um, plastic containers. So you can see from a distance, this is looking from the glider club up to the development. The fencing stands out quite uh, visually, as does the stockpiles of uh, store bales, but yeah, more pin. Getting closer, you can see the um, coaches to skip liveried skips. One or two of the skips there. You can see the stockpiles in the background and this fencing that stand out on top of this and which they put around the site. This is looking up the footpath where that uh, pedestrian was going. So you can see the land opens out into the countryside. It is on high point. This is looking down towards the, uh, the Glider Club at Fairfields Farm and the Roby Digester on the right hand side. So it's fairly open and elevated. That is the field behind where they would want the composting to be extended into up towards the tree line. And that's looking behind the development northwards where the land drops away to Mount Burles and the area of national beauty further on of this picture. As of the 13th of April, which is only one or two weeks away, there was still timber composting on the timber shredding and storage on this particular site. And these were taken recently. There you can see the farmer's uh, containers on the land adjacent, which would also be used for extending this particular site onto that area of land. So the stockpile, uh, the store bales are quite high. There's uh, one or two trailers up there, and you can see the site hidden away behind. There's the farmer's stockpiles of uh, various fencing and other paraphernalia. And this is the reservoir on the left-hand side, which forms the western boundary of the development. You can see the timber stockpiles sticking up behind. And this just shows the area of land which the farmer has been occupying, kind of storage development, etc. And this is looking down the footpath with the site on the left, down towards Fairfield's farm. I'll take you through 
the report, guys. Onto that, most of it's been picked up on in terms of what I just mentioned in there. The planning background on page 89 details the previous history. I've taken a lot of, I've taken a lot of quotes out of that previous committee report because it's pertinent to this particular one. The original applications, which were 3310 and 1011 respectively, were for 8,000 tonnes and then 10,000 tonnes of composting. This present application is for 25,000 tonnes. The previous application, which was refused, was for a maximum of 12 vehicles. This one is for 64, I believe, which we'll come on to. Yeah, so it's 60 on page 91. So, large increase and a large increase in the composting and availability of material within the site. The applicant is saying that they would want to create PAS 100 compost, which is a um, specification for green waste plus shredded timber. They don't specify how much of that compost would be made up of the shredded timber, but if, as you can see on site, what comes first? Is it the, the timber or is it the composting which is leading this application? I've gone through the, the console T's. Yes, in the report, a lot of the console T, well, all of them are for the parish councils, all four of them, the four parish councils object. Console T's either have no comment or um, no objection. However, they are technical console T's to which the planning authority, ourselves, have to make that balanced judgment. We can take their views on board or whatever. And in this particular case, we've considered it and the recommendation at the end is for a refusal, as you can see on page 104. <coughs> so the history of the site has been set out. It's had a long history, which is set out in the plan application, not only for composting, but um, a withdrawn caravan development, and one or two other developments which have had refusals in the past. The Glider Club have their operations. They've had one or two refusals as, as well for use, utilizing the land for gliders but the gliders are based further away, just to the north of Fairfield's farm complex, which you can see on the pictures. The footprint of this particular development is set out well in the countryside and probably well away from the development boundary of the Fairfield farm complex. So in terms of recommendation, which is on page 124, I think for the reasons of scale, nature and location, the encroachment of development in the countryside causing harm to the openness, quality and character of the landscape and countryside, and the development not, uh, not catering for any waste capacity shortfalls. What the applicant is saying here is they'll divert material which is going to Birch Airfield and to reduce vehicle miles and to get some local trade, they'll pull in the conscious skip vehicles who would supply the material into this particular site. So in terms of county council waste management, they're not creating a brand new site which is going to cater for new waste management facilities. Yes, it will probably free up some space at Birch Airfield, but that's not the be all and end all. This application is to provide a medium for fertilizer for the far Fairfield farm complex and any excess being allowed to go into the open market. So this is an application which is seen as just for the developer's own commercial benefit and to divert some waste from the local area into this particular site via the coaches to skip carriers. Question marks do raise in terms of were this approved? How do you actually monitor it's all coaches to skip vehicles going in? The access roads into the complex are used by the crisp factory, the farm operations, the AD operations. There are a lot of HDVs and other vehicles going into that site. How would we monitor and enforce stopping every vehicle? Where are you going? Chris factory, pass. Composting? No, you don't, kind of thing. So, monitoring and enforcement would not be very clear on that. Would it open up to other developers to come in, uh, sorry, um, carriers to deliver material rather than them going all the way down to Birch? That hasn't been answered. So, in terms of development extending to the countryside, similar to the previous applications, the location hasn't changed, the policy hasn't really changed. The site is virtually the same as what was the original footprint. The tonnages have gone up, the vehicle numbers have gone up, and it's probably the inappropriate location for this particular development. Hence the reason, page 124, we've recommended refusal. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Thank you, Terry. Members, any questions for Terry? It's very seldom we get an application with a recommendation or refusal, and uh, in the presentation it's uh, very clear, indicates why 
it is better than recommended for the future. So Councillor Garner. No, just a just point of clarification, really, but I, I, sort of, I read it and as I was reading it, I, I thought, no, this is in the middle of the countryside. You know, we need to protect, we have a duty as well, protect the countryside. And I, the, the site for this is a separate site from the main areas. It, it's, it's, because it seems to be a hell of a long journey with all those HGVs. So that so it is a separate site. The, foot, the footprint the corner. is yeah. right yeah. on the northern area yeah. of the site, yes. Okay, thank you, Chair. Councillor Pond. Uh, Chairman, um, I, I thought the officer's exposition was uh, exemplary. Uh, we do need, uh, if we are to take uh, climate change seriously, to provide for sites for recycling, composting, and generally uh, doing useful things with things that we might in the past have chucked in a very large hole. So to that extent, I think this, work, this um, application is welcome. But uh, these things have to be done in the right place and <clears throat> counterbalanced against them must be the damage that is done, A, to the rural environment and B, to residents who may uh, live in the vicinity of the site. So uh, I don't have strong views on this, but I must say I was convinced with what the officer would say. Thank you, Councillor Pond. Any other comments, members? Would anybody like to uh, uh, move the proposal on page one, two, three, one, two, four? Councillor Gardner, are you moving? Moving, yes. I'll second that. Councillor Stapetow. Okay, uh, so we got a recommendation to agree with the uh, um, officer's uh, refusal. All those in favour, please show. I think it's unanimous, Emma, would you like to confirm? Thank you, Chairman, that was unanimous. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Terry, um, for the presentation and the, the, I can recommend that the uh, applications therefore refused. Thank you. Councillor Jowes, welcome back. <laughs> uh, we now go to uh, uh, 4.2, Ashledon Quarry. Uh, and uh, again, that's just in the very capable hands of uh, Mr. Burns, over to you, Terry. So will be if I get this going. <laughs> okay, so our second application, unfortunately, is a retrospective one. However, we are recommending approval on this particular one. So I'll show them quarry. Let's take you through some pickies, because you like those. That. So the application area is in the northern boundary of this particular quarry. Ashledon Quarry, the sand and gravel operation. Um, bearing, oops, why isn't this picking up? Okay. Southern gravel quarry, which is um, been extracted for minerals and also has a permission for infill back to agricultural nature conservation land. Plant permission now runs out, I think it's 2029. So the application area, as I said, is in the northern, uh, northern part of the quarry, and it comprises um, <coughs> recycling plant, which you can see in the background there, and the base for accommodating the recycled materials. That's another picture of the recycling plant, which has been up and running now. Uh, the parish council have seen this a few times because we have regular liaison meetings on the site, so they are fully aware of the situation and the background to this. So when it came to our attention, they put it up. Yeah, we've been working with the applicant to get the application in to regularise it or consider it. And now it's formed this particular application. You're now sitting here looking at the report. So aerial shot of the northern half of the particular quarry. The recycling area is on the right-hand side there. The plant, the bays, which you've just seen, are located just off, off the axis road onto Southminster Road. The main processing plant is within spitting distance, just to the south, and the concrete batching plant, which they have on the site, is located on that little white footprint that you can see. So self-contained, it's making use of the existing access roads. The material which comes in, goes over the waybridge, comes into the site, is offloaded into the base, sorted, processed. That which isn't recyclable goes off into the site to be um, used for infill, so it's sustainable and the material used in the site, if they've got any poor quality material from the quarry, that can be mixed in with the recycled material to make a secondary aggregate to be utilised and not wasted at the end of the day. 
So it's juxtaposition with the existing plant. You can see here there's the application area, the washing um, recycling plant. There's the concrete batching plant, which you've just seen. There's the main processing plant for the quarry. So it's all self-contained just in for the site access. The quarry itself, and in uh, a Think of an L shape, uh, switch it round. So the L, the bottom part of the L is the processing recycling areas, which we've just got the application in on. The lagoons, which are operational for the quarry, and the quarry is extracting south to north, and they're currently in this northern area, extracting the sand and gravel. This area is going back to a lake and will be a larger lake once the restoration uh, is completed. And the areas light brown and green in the background have now been infilled. And this piece of land has actually been sold off to the adjacent uh, farmer and now has uh, pony paddocks, horsey paddocks on it. And the rest of the land is being brought up to um, existing contour level and that will be going into aftercare quite soon. So in terms of the quarry, as I said, the processing plant integral to the operational um, activities on the site. It's complementary, it fits our policies, it's co-located, it makes use of existing materials coming into the site and it can make use of additional material which is deemed poor by the operators so you can go through and get an extra added value benefit within the quarry. In terms of the report, we've not had any objections on the particular site, but you will notice that on Malden District Council, and I've explained that in their consultation response on page 138, 139, have probably got themselves confused in terms of definition of policies. They've gone for a minerals policy, secondary aggregates, secondary aggregates under the mineral policy, as I've explained in there, in the text, is mostly the mortar, the concrete batching, the winning of minerals from a quarry, not to make a primary mineral, which goes out to the processing plant, but to add added value and make a concrete product or a mortar, that is the secondary um, product, which EM4 of the minerals local plant actually covers. The waste local plan actually covers under policy five and six, which I've outlined in the report itself, picks up on co-location of complementary activities, which its application is. And so it fits our policies and the recommendation is to approve on this. Sure. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Terry. Uh, we now have a speaker on this application, Mr. Andrew Clark, who will be speaking on behalf of the applicants and I believe he's online. Hello. Hello. Mr. Clark, good morning. Uh, you have three minutes uh, to do your presentation. Emma, the clerk will give you a prompt when there's 30 seconds left. Uh, and then you'll be asked to wind up. Whenever you uh, Good morning, members. My name is Mark from Strum. I'm speaking this morning on behalf of the EMPP Limited to Labour and Staff Council. I'm pleased to see the plans now before you will be recommended for approval with no objection from Essex County Council. Proposals have been submitted retrospectively to regularise the use of the new water plant with associated infrastructure, including relevant recycling activities such as a screener, crusher, concrete bays and stockpiles at Ashwood and Quarry. The wash plant is ancillary to the wider quarry and is required for the washing of mixed construction and demolition soils. It is located within the wider quarry and is complementary to the activities taking place. The wash plant will handle both the as-tag material that is not compatible with space to go through the main process facility, as well as recycling construction and demolition type waste. The recycling facility would also complement the extant approved quarry infilling program by allowing a recycling aspect to the extant imported waste stream to further recover recycled material. The provision of the wash plant will enable the applicants to maximise the recycling of secondary aggregates and reduce the quantum of waste going to landfill. The wash plant has been implemented and designed with careful consideration, in particular in relation to highways, landscape, layout design, soft landscaping, noise, dust, drainage, and restoration. This is also reflected through the lack of sleep of the objections. Members will note that the application is received with objections from Molden District Council in relation to the principle of development. However, this is considered clarified and addressed through the Office of the Committee Report. 
policy encourages recycling facilities to be located on existing mineral landfill sites where materials used in conjunction with site restoration or such waste operations are temporary and linked to the cessation of the mineral waste site. The recycling facility would support the provision of the site being an aggregate recycling centre, the operation of which operate within the existing quarry complex restrictions. I do believe that the proposal now before you represent a good quality development that will provide support to local economic benefit. With all matters considered, I respectfully ask members to agree with your officer's recommendation and grant plan permission to allow the water plant to continue in its use. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much indeed, uh, Mr. Clark. Uh, okay, the members, um, do have any speakers? To go Councillor Hardware and then Councillor Jowers. <coughs> Um, a question as to why this is retrospective. Did the uh, uh, operator not realise that they uh, had to put a planning application before they built their new facilities? Tell me, do you want to pick that up? I think like a lot of operators, they probably try their luck, uh, get development up, and then suddenly comes to our attention. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Councillor Jowers. Well, I was going to say the same thing because I hate retrospective applications. I mean, there is always, you know, just a thought behind it. Why the hell didn't they sort of go ahead and ask us properly? But having said that, it's extraordinary application. There are no objections, apart from Morden's rather bizarre interpretation. <laughs> I'm sure that Councillor Fleming will explain all that to us. They take the message back. And so um, but, you know, for the parish council saying that they support the application, and um, although it was advertised, no letters of representation. I mean, it's quite extraordinary. So I, I, I would have to say that I would recommend approval of this. Thank you, Councillor Jowis. Uh, Councillor Fleming, do you want to come in on that particular thing? Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, actually, before we go any further, Terry, do you mind just expanding on Malden's objection, where, where you think they've sort of... I think they got their policies muddled up. Yeah. yeah, so page 138. Yeah. <coughs> so second paragraph down for Malden's comments, where they've actually quoted policy DM4 and then gone on in the third paragraph then to outline the against that policy, it would be considered there are no exceptional circumstances for the development and that the development in sense would be contrary to that particular policy itself. So it's easy to mistake because when we, in the industry, when we use the word secondary aggregates, people automatically think is a capital S or a small s. So think of it, capital S would be the minerals, secondary aggregates where National and Quarry could probably dig out the sand and gravel, process it, and send it off to their market, but also utilise some of the material into the concrete batching plant, create a secondary product from that, and that will go out as a concrete material, as opposed to secondary aggregate with a small s, which is more akin to the waste recycling of this world, where material can be brought in and it's, it replaces virgin materials rather than digging them up. And as, you know, from your previous training, when we've gone through these various bits, I've explained the secondary aggregates and the primary aggregates. It's an easy one to miss out. But yeah, we do have a particular policy within the waste local plan, which I picked up on here, that it does actually provide for co-location of mineral and waste operations on the same site. And in actual fact, policy DM4 does also allude to that with complementary operations taking place on mineral sites. So whilst using, Molden's using policy DM4 in this particular circumstance was probably incorrect for using secondary processing plant, which the text to the minerals local plant does actually state what secondary plant is, the concrete batching, the mortar batching of this world. It's not secondary with a small s, which is a waste operation. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Fleming. Yeah. Uh, if you have any other points, I'll go to Councillor Garner first and then come back to you. Councillor Garner. Councillor Hardware, Councillor Jowers has okay. part, part answered both my questions. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Fleming, do you have any, any further comments? No, I'm satisfied. Well, the application has been proposed by Councillor Jowers. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Steptoe, thank you very much. Um, we'll now go, there's no, nothing on the uh, addendum on this particular one. So we'll go to the vote. Uh, all those in favour, please show. I think we are unanimous again, Emma. Yeah, we are. Thank you very much indeed. The application is therefore granted.
Uh, thank you very much, members, and thank you, Terry. You are free to leave. <laughs> You're welcome to stay. Chairman, Mr. Green. Excuse me. Um, just while Terry's moving on, I just thought I'd fill this space about retrospective planning applications, if you like. So um, uh, it's not illegal to, make, to carry out development without planning permission, as you know, but obviously if it needs planning permission, you can make a retrospective planning application. It doesn't always go down too well with perhaps planning officers and members. So the government has just consulted on uh, a technical consultation on fees and performance that uh, we've just responded to. And one of the proposals in that consultation is to double the fee of retrospective planning applications that we, we, we have supported and we've made some further Just to fill that gap. Mr Graves, that is very, very reassuring because the country where I was born, they actually advocate retrospective application because they cost 10 times as much. <laughs> so therefore they create themselves a nice little income and every five years they have what's called the uh, um, granting of permission. But I'm very, very pleased to hear that. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, so as we uh, agreed at the beginning of the agenda, we go to 5.2 first, uh, the Great Bentley Primary School, uh, which is in the hands of uh, Michael. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, just before I start my presentation, I'd just like to draw your attention to uh, the typo corrections in the addendum and amendments to condition 2 and 6, 7, 8 and the new condition 15 listed on the addendum which refers to the construction management plan. <coughs> Sorry, can you speak up a little bit, Sorry. Sorry. We're very quiet. quiet well. <laughs> Primary School is located on um, Plough Road in Great Bentley Village. The nearest residential properties are um, adjacent to the school site in Plough Road and Morello Close. The London to Clacton and Newton and the Mays rail line is to the south of the site with the village hall beyond. Vehicular and pedestrian access is via Plough Road with a school car park access, um, access via track within third party ownership. The existing school building is within the Great Bentley settlement boundary as defined within the Tendering District Local Plan. The playing fields and area of proposed development are located outside the settlement boundary. The main school building also lies within the Great Bentley Conservation Area. However, this designation does not extend over the more modern extension to the rear of the school, the playing fields, or the proposed area of development. It is proposed to construct a two-storey standalone building um, to facilitate a one-form entry expansion to the school. This would result in an increase of 210 pupils at the school over a seven year period. A new MUPPA, which is a multi-use play area, would be provided, which would include a mini running track and would consist of a permeable surface. This would extend the existing hard play area for the, at the school. The existing car parking area consists of 17 car parking spaces. It is proposed to extend the existing car parking to provide an additional 11 car parking spaces, making a total of 28, which is in accordance with the parking standards guidance. Two accessible spaces would be included within this total, together with a new electric vehicle charging point. The school currently has 20 existing cycle parking spaces, and this would be... Um, there would be an additional 20 cycle parking spaces provided as part of the new application, together with 48 scooter parking places. An air source heat pump compound would be located within the extended car parking area adjacent to the new building. An internal remodeling works to the main school building would provide a new reception classroom 
and an existing external canopy would be replaced with a new canopy. And this just shows the proposed development in a bit more detail. And the new building and the muffler and the extended <coughs> area. The ground floor of the proposed building will consist of three classrooms, a studio, a group room, toilet facilities, storage, and a plant room. And the first floor would consist of four classrooms, a group room, toilet facilities, and storage. It's proposed to provide uh, PV panels on the roof of the new building, and access to the roof would be via an access hatch on, from the first floor. Uh, the need for the proposed building is set out in section A of the report. There is a protect, projected deficit of primary school places in the area, which has been called a high level of new housing in the village. Although there are four other primary schools within the planning group, Great Bentley Primary School is the only <coughs> walking distance of the new housing within the village. The main school building shown in the top left photo was constructed in 1896 and is within the Great Bentley Conservation Area. The extension shown to the bottom right was constructed in the late 20th century and falls outside the conservation area. Following comments received from the county's urban designer at pre-application stage, the proposed building has been relocated closer to the existing built form. The proposed mupper has been reorientated and both the building and mupper are now to the north of the existing and extended car parking area, which is considered has resulted in a more logical site layout with less redundant and unusable space. The revised site layout also allows for existing play equipment to be relocated and reduces the encroachment of the proposed development on the school playing field. The proposed building would be orientated in an east to west direction. The eastern elevation comprises of a projecting canopy with accent cladding to emphasise the main entrance. <coughs> the proposed external materials for the new building consist of red brick on the ground floor with dark grey coloured composite cladding on the first floor. Windows and doors would be dark grey powder coated aluminium. Windows on the eastern and western elevations would incorporate air grills for the air source heat pump system. The county's urban designer has raised no objection to the proposed development and considers that many of their previous comments have been taken into account, which has resulted in an, in an improved scheme. <coughs> it considers that the use of red brick and accent cladding has resulted in a contemporary style suitable for a primary school. A number of sustainable elements have been included within the proposed developments, which are set out in more detail within Section D of the report. The County's Historic Buildings Advisor has raised no objection to the proposed development, but has concerns over the composite cladding and advises that timber or zinc cladding would be more suitable for the external materials. A condition has therefore been recommended requiring details and samples of the external materials to be submitted for approval. It considers that harm, the harm to the significance of the conservation area is at a low level of less than substantial. The level of harm has been weighted against the public benefit as set out in paragraph 196 of the NPPF. It is considered that ensuring sufficient primary school places are available the children in the area will provide the public benefits required. Um, the main reason for the application coming before members today is the receipt of a rejection from Sport England, who, are, who is a statutory consultee as the proposed development encroaches onto the existing school playing field. Sport England does not consider that the proposal would meet any of its exemption policies. The existing winter and summer playing pitch provision shown in this drawing would be maintained, although the football pitch for the winter sports would need to be reorientated. However, this reorientation is not Sport England's recommended orientation for football pitches, which part, forms part of their objection. 
Football England has acknowledged that the school's current playing pitch needs may still be met by the retained playing field and understands that there is no existing community use of the field. However, it considers that the area of playing field affected may be required by the school in future and the loss of the area may also lead to a precedent for future encroachments onto the playing field. Their role is to safeguard playing fields to meet the needs of current and future users. users. Sport England suggested three mitigation measures to address their concerns, which included community use of the school's playing fields and other facilities, the provision of a mugger rather than a mupper, and off-site playing field provision. However, these are not considered to be feasible by the applicant, and the community use could also lead to an impact on residential amenity. The applicant explored alternative locations for the proposed building and MUPA. However, due to existing site constraints, no suitable alternative locations could be identified. The new MUPA could be used by the school all year round, and on balance, it is considered that this outweighs the impact resulting from the loss of existing playing field. Should committee resolve to grant planning permission, contrary to Sport England's objection, the application would need to be referred to the Secretary of State via the Planning Casework Unit for it to determine whether it wishes to call in the application for its determination. And there was a period of 21 days for um, Secretary of State to respond. Um, and these two photos just show the extent of the existing school playing fields. Um, an objection has also been received from the county's arboriculturalist with regard to the removal of two Category B trees within the extended car parking area. It considers that the trees could be retained by using specialist construction techniques to avoid root compaction. However, the applicant has confirmed that these trees have already been removed from site as they were not within the conservation area and were not TPO'd and therefore permission was not required. Um, a total of 10 trees, including the two that have already been removed, three sections of existing hedging and one entire hedge would need to be removed to facilitate the proposed development. And this plan just shows some of the proposed new landscaping, um, including new trees and hedging. And following comments received from the county's landscape team, the applicant has increased the number of replacement trees from 19 to 23 increase the number of species to be planted and include a flowering lawn mix, which is considered to provide biodiversity benefits. A new native hedge would be planted to the western... the western and part of the northern um, boundary of the extended car parking area. Aside from the objections from Sport England and the county's arboriculturalist, no further objections have been received from statutory and non-statutory consultees, subject to the conditions detailed in the committee report and the addendum. Um, one letter of representation has been received from a local resident unhappy about the consultation process, particularly the pre-application process and residents' involvement in the scheme. The resident has also raised concerns about existing traffic problems in the area, which are set out in section five of the report, and the majority of these are outside the control of the council. As stated previously, the school currently has 20 car parking space, sorry, 20 cycle parking spaces. This would be incre increased by an additional 20 cycle parking spaces and 48 street parking spaces, which is considered to be acceptable by the Highway Authority. Through its travel plan, the school is investigating the promotion of more sustainable methods of transport to school, including participating in walk to school week, bike to school week and health week. Apologies, Chairman. 50 quid to the chairman's. That's fine. Thank you. There is also an opportunity to promote a park and stride arrangement subject to the agreement of the owners of the village hall and the active participation of parents and carers. The Highway Authority has no objection to the proposed development subject to the conditions listed in the report and condition 15 on the addendum. 
that it considers that the proposed expansion could be managed in a sustainable way, and vehicular trips associated with the school <coughs> could be reduced through the implementation of an updated travel plan. It is considered that the need for the proposed expansion of the school has been demonstrated and would be in accordance with national and local plan policy. Subject to the Secretary of State not wishing to call in the application for its own determination, it is recommended that planning permission be granted in accordance with the conditions set out in the report and the amendments to conditions 2, 6, 7 and 8 and the new condition contained within the addendum. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Rachel. Very comprehensive presentation. Uh, I will go to Mr. Andrew Clark, who should be online, uh, who's going to speak on behalf of the uh, applicants. Mr. Andrew Clark, you know the drill. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, you got three minutes, and Emma will give you a prompt at 30 seconds uh, left. Great, thank you. Uh, good morning, members. Just to introduce yourself again, my name is Andrew Clark from Strutter Parker, and I speak this morning on behalf of Feed Infrastructure and the County Council's infrastructure delivery team in favour of this application. I'm pleased to see that the plans now before you have been recommended for approval with no objection from Tendron District Council or the County Council. There is a large demand for school places in the area due to an increase in birth rates and new housing growth. The proposals will expand the existing Great Bentley School by 210 pupils and help meet this demand. The application was submitted on the 15th of February 2023 following extensive pre-application discussions with officers at Essex County Council Planning Authority, the Highway Authority, Sport England and Network Rail. The design team has worked extensively with officers to put forward a scheme that is both functional for the school and responds to the constraints of the site. The layout of the site specifically has been designed through much consideration with the County Planning Authority and has evolved through a number of changes to the layout presented to you today. The package of technical information submitted with the application confirms that, that no adverse impacts will arise from the development, including in relation to highways and parking, ecology, amenity and landscaping. This is also supported by the lack of statutory consultee objections. Members will be, will be aware of the comments regarding tree removal from place services. However, unfortunately, the school removed these prior to the submission of the application on the basis that they did not require plan permission. It is, however, considered that the 24 proposed trees will offset the loss. Please note that the landscape management plan was updated totally to meet the report, which shows five and three the proposed initially. While Port England have maintained an objection on the proposals following three application changes with them, the concerns in relation to the small loss of playing field is considered to be outweighed by provision of a new multi use place space and the wider benefit to provide to the local community. This was the view of officers at the council planning authority also. The loss of parts of the school playing field is not significant and will have no impact on the sports pitches which the playing field could become be used for. I do believe that the proposals now before you represent a good quality development that will not only provide important school places but also a new purpose built sports facility <coughs> and relevant works to the existing school. With all matters considered, I respectfully ask you to approve your officer's recommendation and grant plan permission to allow the school to enter the feature of Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clark, thank you very much indeed for your presentation. Uh, I'll go to members now. Councillor Jarvis. Well, thank you, Chairman. Um, it's a good application, but it brings up a perennial problem, which is Great Bentley is an absolutely amazing village, very popular village, but it's growing. Mm. And it's growing, you know, I have the same problem in, in, in Mersey. And you have a defined limit for where schools are and where they can go. It's actually a beautiful school. So the, the, the controversy really is between Sport England and their remit is purely to preserve. Now that's understandable, they're a good bunch. But you have to balance out what is the overriding factor determining it. The numbers you can see in the report go up. Um, they will have 420 places in total covering that deficit. And of course, there is a lot of development going on there. I know the chairman will know much more about this than I do. Um, I think that also Great Bentley has got quite a lot of incomers within the village. Um, pretty well, no, I can't say they're pretty well reached, but a lot of people just don't want any change. But sometimes, there is a necessity because they're moving there and they have children. 
with them. So you have to produce the places for the kids, but you can't touch anything. And that's a conundrum, really. I think that actually this application, I'm surprised there isn't a neighbourhood plan, actually, for Bentley, because it's, it's, it's extraordinary, quite a big village. Um, <coughs> and I also like the idea of contrast, of the new development, the new part of the building, against the old. I wouldn't agree with the um, timber. Its maintenance costs are phenomenal. I lo quite like that composite stuff. Mersey looks like Connecticut. It's everywhere. Yes. Uh, it's actually very low maintenance, so I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. And I have to say that the basic argument by Sport England on orientation, I mean, I, no, I better not say that there are other things that you need to have a specific orientation for, but I am baffled as to why that is such an important consideration. And also, the MUPPA, it's an extraordinary name, isn't it? It's a new thing, this new scheme, a MUPPA. Um, I, I was baffled by this. <coughs> but from what I've seen of kids playing is that they actually prefer the concept of a MUPPA, multi-use play area, to actually a bleak and windswept field. These are juniors and infants. Primary school. Yeah. Primary school. If it were a secondary school, I would give much more weight sporting. But because of what it is, I suspect that this will be an improvement. And I'm, I'm quite happy with the replacement of trees. Um, we see it frequently is that under no circumstances can you touch any tree. And, you know, when I look at sycamores growing in my garden, I think, well, these are the biggest weeds the world has ever seen. If you can replace them with an elegant and thoughtful planting, you're investing in the future. So from my point of view, I think that the need outweighs the objection. So I would propose that we accept this recommendation. Councillor Jowers, thank you very much indeed. The one point you missed out there was that uh, Bentley has the misfortune of being on the main line to London. Exit, uh, which that becomes another very attractive, <laughs> or fortunate as the case may be. And he got caught in the crossfire when there was a vacuum of the right. plan. It was a string of other villages had. It was this string of pearls concert where everything on the line yeah. expanded, and uh, you know these are the consequences. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for your contribution, Councillor Gardner. Do you have next speaker? Thank you, Chairman. Um, one, one question and some comments, really. Um, the uh, fire and rescue. Um, we're talking about the existing access does not comply with fire service requirements. Is that a major concern? Rachel? Um, no, the applicant has provided some additional information to the Fire and Rescue Service to show, and they have now agreed that it does comply with their requirements. Okay, good. Can I, can I, I don't like to complain, but I'm, we've got the report here. No photographs, no pictures, got a little bit at the beginning as a site. Um, What's shown there is very limited information. I, I, I was concerned about design, um, but I've got, they've got a few lines. We told there's some red bricks, there's a bit of woodwork, but you know there's no pictures of what's perceived. And it, putting it together, I know it's separated from the, from the existing building, and I don't disagree with John. You know, you can have old, you can have new, but it's got if it's a square box. <laughs> which I think we, we've discussed at this meeting for so long, it may not be appropriate. So I, I, I'm concerned that the, the information I've got as a member of this panel is insufficient. You know, I'm going to have to make a decision, but I, I, it's a shame that, I, you know, we've got no pictures. We couldn't sit at home and look at them and try and compare them. So if, for future, perhaps we, we normally do. So I don't know why we didn't, didn't on this occasion. Um. Richard, Mr. Yeah, Reeves. Um, Chairman, we would normally, and you'll probably know it's from Mr. McCarthy's report, there's a few more uh, diagrams in that report. We'll take that away and, and, um, and we'll address that for next time round. But I should remind members, there is a link in, in the agenda for every report to go into our case management system mm -hmm. and view every single drawing that's been, that's been submitted with the application. So on publication a week before, mm -hmm. you will have that link. And it's up to members whether they want to go in and view further details of the application themselves. So it's a fine line I appreciate between providing a lot of the application detail in an officer report, which is what it should be, an officer report, not necessarily contain the drawings, but members have requested before or 
a flavour of um, uh, of the scheme within the report. So we'll, we'll, we'll take that away. And, yeah. and, 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 so, and if you look at the next application or the preceding application, you've got pictures of what the school looks like, so we can form an opinion along with the report, you know, rather than just a few lines. OK. We'll take that away. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hardware, next speaker. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would agree that uh, it looks a, a, a good application. Uh, it's got the, uh, the right elements in. I'm pleased to see all the sustainability aspects. Um, usually the design of these things is a, is a box. Uh, pleased to see that they've tried to uh, integrate it with the architecture around there. Um, then we come to the trees. I'm not um, renowned for being a tree hugger, but uh, a couple of comments did strike me in that they have been removed. The two trees, two category B trees have been removed. Uh, why were they removed? Um, I, I suspect, because they haven't started construction, this isn't a retrospective application. Um, I, I have a feeling that they've been removed because they might be an issue. Well, if they've done nothing wrong, because obviously there's no TPO on them and they're not within the conservation area, but it does strike me, and perhaps you can answer this, the officer, uh, as to being a little bit underhand, um, which will sway which way I vote on this as to what your answer is. <laughs> um, and also uh, the suggestion that there's going to be 24 replacement trees. Um, yeah, we've all seen replacement trees, uh, little whips that uh, are put in the ground, um, half of which die. Um, as to whether we can insist that these are some of your proper trees um, that will actually make a contribution far sooner than a couple of little twigs. Thank you. For the question I asked as well, uh, Rachel, would you have to repeat um, what you said to me? Yeah, with regard to the trees, the, um, the landscape team have requested that um, a selection of sizes are, of the trees are included, larger stock sizes are included, and there will be some semi mature trees planted. Um, they won't all be semi-mature, but there will be a variety of um, sizes. So, um, and there will be another landscaping plan to be submitted for approval by our landscaping team. Um, so, it will be for them to decide whether what's being proposed is acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, with regard to the, the trees that have been removed, um, yeah, I did originally ask the applicant if these trees, if they could explore ways of retaining these two trees within the car parking area. It was then that I was informed they'd already been removed. Um, and we did express our disappointment that they had been, I know they didn't need permission, um, but we did express our disappointment that they had been removed prior to planning permission being granted. Well, as this is a county council, okay. I think it is, um, I, I will be voting against this because I think that is very underhand behaviour. Uh, Councillor Bond. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Well, now, Great Bentley is a long way from Lowton, but I actually <laughs> know this site quite well uh, because, of course, it is the prime site you come to once you enter Great Bentley on the main line, as, as you said a few minutes ago. So it's, it's an important site at the entry to the village if you don't come by car. Now, uh, I do think that the County Council has a propensity in making school applications to, um, to design what uh, Pete Seeger used to call ticky-tacky boxes. Uh, and this is a, a plain cube um, without any architectural uh, um, embellishment at all. Uh, and it includes um, what I might call modern materials, including the composite cladding. Now, I'm not so keen on that as, uh, as Councillor Jowers. Yeah. Uh, because I think m materials should be as much as possible natural, notwithstanding that in true Essex fashion they should need creosoting once in a while. And... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, creosote substituting, I can <laughs> your pardon. Um, so I I'm not entirely convinced by this application. Uh, I also think we should be very, very circumspect about increasing the number of car parking spaces. Uh, in our own establishments. But having said that, there is, of course, a great demand. Uh, anyone 
uh, going around, even the Great Greens of Great Bentley, um, we'll, we'll see, out, particularly outside the, the conservation area, how many more dwellings have been constructed recently. So therefore there is a need, I don't think we can argue against that. Uh, but this construction is to be adjacent to a conservation area. And I think therefore special need, uh, and special care needs to be taken in constructing a building which is congruent uh, with, with the protected school building. I agree with, with Councillor Jowers. The, the protected school building is a, a particularly nice example of 19th century design and we should protect it and its environs. So on, in all, I'm a little um, in sympathy with Councillor Hardware on this. I think the removal of the trees was perhaps something you would um, you would expect of a somewhat fly and not necessarily very <laughs> reputable developer, not the public authority. Uh, and so I regret that very much. Um, but I am in two minds about it. Uh, obviously, uh, Great Bent in its its district needs uh, the school capacity, but whether this is the way to do it, I have my doubts. Mr. Graves, do you want to come in on the, on that particular uh, thing on the, yeah, on the I tree? Think, I mean, Rachel's been through um, um, the tree and the landscaping issues in the report, and I don't want to answer that. I kind of want to step back from that, and there's a more general issue, isn't there? I know the um, speaking for my colleagues across the other side of the fence and the need to, to uh, build schools rapidly to cater for school places when uh, term time starts. So there's a uh, planning is a small part of the whole uh, project plan, but I, in no way am I defending the actions of, of, the, of the developer arm of the county council here. And, and obviously with the, um, I guess a, a solution to this is, uh, or, or maybe possible recommendation with the chairman's consent is that um, we can write to the developers to express the committee's concerns about the removal of, uh, of trees in advance of any uh, planning permission being granted or works consented, uh, particularly in this occasion where there are category B trees that have been removed in advance. Because, um, you know, it's, the, it's always the committee's prerogative to refuse these applications. And if that therefore happened, the damage has already been done and that potentially leaves a site without any development occurring with the loss of two trees that has taken place. So um, there is, there's, there's clear risk on uh, that from the county council or from the as developer in, in doing this in advance so I guess with the chairman's consent I can write to um, or, or possibly the chairman can write with the committee's consent um, uh, to express the concerns of the committee particularly on this occasion and any future yeah, uh, chairman I'd like to move that that be done take place I, I was thank you uh, uh, Richard I, I was going to suggest that because I'm sure there'll be other comments about the trees and that was my main comments when we uh, uh, talked about the application and the, uh, of the briefing. Uh, that's, you know, it, it is, I've sat on this committee since 2013. This is the first time that the applicants as county councillors removed trees in, in such a manner. So I was going to suggest that I would do that, but uh, uh, you, you, you're proposing that I write formally and, and, and I'll absolutely, uh, I absolutely will do that. So thank you, Richard, for uh, uh, suggesting that. Uh, Councillor Aspinall, you're next, and I know what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I might surprise you. Um, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, th there is a conundrum here. Obviously, we're increasing the sizes of the, the school, <coughs> school numbers. We're increasing the local residents by building more houses everywhere. Um, and so there is a problem. But that problem shouldn't be solved by putting up something that is less than what is there already and restricting the um, playing fields that are obviously in place because they're required now. And we're increasing the amount of people that will need them in the future. We're not looking at, as in the officer's report, it says that they're not encroaching on the playing fields. They're not encroaching on the playing fields that are there now. We're talking about a building that's, uh, or an establishment that's over 127 years old. Uh, times change. And sporting 
things change. So that there may be a, a use for that space in the future. Who knows? I don't. I'm, I'm pretty sure most people don't. But I have to declare an interest as at some stage because <clears throat> I was chair of ethics sport for a long number of years, which is an affiliation to Sport England. And I told, and of uh, that, I also was on the um, National Playing Fields uh, Committee. So, yeah, I, I can't agree with that aspect. I totally agree with Sport England on that. Two other, or two, at least two other things that worry me about this application and other applications that come through for our schools. It seems to be that if we can put in place a plan for um, safer school travel or a travel plan for the school, it's okay, that's a, tick, that's a box that's ticked. But in reality, in the real world, how many times does that actually happen? I have one of the biggest problems in my division is school parking, uh, school um, access. Problematic. You have, with travel plans for walking buses and all the rest, you need to rely on volunteers and teachers, goodwill and other people in the community to put themselves out to do that. If you haven't got that, it's all well, well and good saying, oh, the developer is going to actively investigate this and get this in place. If it's not there, well, what happens? You get the roads are blocked up with cars. Is the additional car parking just for staff? Uh, if so, then what arrangements have been put in place for additional parents dropping off or picking up? Um, what is happening there? Is there any possibility of expanding car parking in and around the area for that purpose, which would make it safer for children and guardians taking them to and from school? And my last point is one I have regaled you with before, Chairman, and that is the diabolical design of the County Council's idea of a good-looking building. And it's no wonder we haven't got a, a picture of it here, if it, what as I've heard. It is uh, mainly a box with a flat roof. What, what enhancement of the area, of a conservation area, or something that we can be proud of going forward is that we have knocked back here uh, a school in Basildon for the same reason. It was just featureless, artless, it was awful, and there wasn't enough attention put to how we were <clears throat> going to produce renewable energies or anything within that design. So it's no wonder we haven't got a picture here, and I, I resent the I'm sorry, but I do resent the officer's remark that if we want to, we can go online. All of us can. Uh, and I would have liked to have seen, with the um, minutes today, or the agenda, a design of what you are proposing, if you want me to vote on it. Uh, and there are lots of things in here that I do not like. I don't like the attitude of the applicants in take those trees down. I was told as a newly elected councillor that, that you cannot put a TPO on council property because it's council property, therefore it's already protected. Is that no longer the case? I'm, I apologise if that legislation or that policy has changed, but that's what I was told when I was first elected. So, Chairman, I cannot support this for all those reasons I've known. Rachel, I'll come to you. I've listed all the issues that uh, Councillor Aspinall's have raised. Uh, do you want to start? Um, yeah, the, the additional car parking would just be for school staff. Um, yeah, that's what I was um, highways don't support the provision of car parking spaces within school grounds for parent parking. Um, no, I didn't say, sorry Chairman, I didn't say within the school grounds, within the area or with on, on street. What are we doing about looking after that? I believe the... Uh, it's not our approach. I believe the village hall, is, which is around the corner, has been, there's conversation been had 
to use that as for benefits of drop off. The possibility of using the village hall car park as a drop off point. Possibilities. Um, but that obviously needs the agreement of the owners of the village mm -hmm. hall. Um, and I think I believe there's also <coughs> possibility of using the station car park for dropping off as well. Um, that obviously needs the agreement of the owners. Um, but I mean, apart from the um, standard parking restrictions outside the school, there are very limited restrictions within the um, streets surrounding the school and the parking restrictions which stop people parking there. So it's difficult to stop parents parking during a couple of times when there's um, very few restrictions on the roads. Richard. Yeah, this is a difficult one. Uh, I've been involved with this committee for years and uh, we all understand this is a point about kind of what happens in reality versus what, what, what the policy is. The policy is around sustainable transport within the, within the county and we should be discouraging parents taking their children to school uh, by car, hence that's why we try not to um, uh, uh, advocate drop-off zones uh, and parking facilities outside school sites. We try and promote um, sustainable schemes such as cycling provision, scooter provision, but we all know in reality that a lot of your uh, patches, if you like, that schools and school parking co do cause uh, a, main, uh, a, major, a major problem and a major issue um, there locally. Um, but the policy is not, not to encourage that, it's to try and use alternative, as you know, to try and use alternative transportation. I think it must be said that there are three uh, fairly large housing estates uh, very, very close to the school and the provision of cycle uh, path and scooter uh, spaces, it kind of reflects that. So it is, I would hope that parents will walk the children to school because they are virtually five, ten minutes walk if that, but you know, reality will be. Uh, and the ward member there, well, I'm sure, will... Um, be looking to submit schemes TRO to the North Eastern Parking Partnership and upset everybody there, but that's in the future. Uh, Plain fields, point taken, design. I think we can have a. I was going to ask at the end of the meeting today for members' training uh, any particular topics that members would like to include as design. So we'll, we'll, we'll probably look to provide some. We had some sessions on designs uh, two or three years ago, I think we did, didn't we? Probably four years ago, I think we could revisit that. Um, and uh, and the trees, I mean, the trees, I will be very happy to write to uh, to the applicant and include the, uh, uh, that, that particular point you raised, Councillor Aspen. Was there anything else that you raised there? De Chairman, yes, sorry. Um, by a spooky coincidence, in my division in Pilgrim's Hatch, I have a school called Blint Bentley, uh, which has an access problem total and is applying to the County Council to expand an area beside it so that actually, in reality, the parents that have to drive, and most of those going to that school have to drive there, um, can have a drop off or something facilitating. I'm trying to get that arranged through the county. Um, but the point I was making for uh, the trees was, is it our policy? Do we automatically protect trees if they are on county council or borough council land? Or Jacqueline, There's no distinction between uh, county land or any other land if a, a, a tree preservation order is placed there or, you know, or not, unless there is an internal policy that I'm not aware of. Well, that's what I was told. There's no planning distinction between uh, county land or any other land. So, Chairman, through you, we should then look at TPOing trees on our land. Can I come in on that, Chairman? Um, tree preservation orders used to be made by the County Council for a long time, but they're now done as a local matter, so the yes, District Council, district council make it. and the District Council have done them, especially on education land, which has been disposed of. So members might be aware of some in their own area. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And my understanding is there is a tree strategy policy that's being formulated, which is due to come to Cabinet, I'm going to say, end of May. But I know there's something being promulgated, which I think is pulling in all the attitudes on trees. Um, so when that's published, you might find that covers a lot of it. But it was never the case that we couldn't make um, an order on Essex County Council land. 
maybe the impression was you didn't need to because the Essex County Council was custodian and would yeah. follow good practices and all the two points were conflated. Thank you, uh, Jacqueline. Uh, next speaker is Councillor Fleming. Councillor Stato, did you indicate a speaker? Or you'd be after Councillor Fleming then. Councillor Fleming, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Rachel, I'm, I'm not wild about this application, if I, to be honest. The first thing that struck me when I look at, looked at the papers was how constrained the site is. Um, <coughs> Just to echo Councillor Aspinall's uh, comments, uh, my inbox is um, regularly filled with uh, complaints about parking around schools and um, it always makes me chuckle when I read a sort of transport assessment that goes with a, an application like this. Somebody's written it, obviously clearly not being a parent that drops off small children. If you've got three children with all their bags and what have you and it's raining, you're not going to be walking to school. Uh, even on a, a sunny day, you're not going to be walking to school. So I'm just a bit disappointed that we don't have, there's nothing in there to sort of mitigate for what's actually going to happen in reality. I don't know whether the chair can tell us whether there's any application in um, at your LHP for measures around the school or in at nothing? Not yet, not yet. Okay, it'll be coming down the track probably. Uh, so yeah, that's my comment, Rachel. Thank you. Rachel. Noted. That's noted, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Stepto. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, first of all, just a point of clarification on the trees. The trees that are going to be replaced, will they be native species? There will be a mix of trees, yeah. There's, I think there's a mix of oak, beech, um, hazel. The, the landscape team have identify the, the variety of trees they would like to see included in the landscaping plan, and it does include native trees. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Chairman, I, I've struggled with this application. When Councillor Giles first moved his proposal, I was going to second it, but I'm not quite so sure now, to be honest with you. Um, I'm going to pick up on a couple of points. The officer there said that we need to be building schools quickly. Well, I don't disagree with that as such, but a lot of local plans have been in place for some considerable time. So why hasn't the County Council taken that on board? Uh, I know the County Council has um, a five-year rolling plan on how, uh, school place numbers. Um, there seems to be a bit of undue haste with this particular application. Picking up on the point of school drop-off and pick-up, I live in a village where uh, we've got two schools. Um, we get the situation where parents have one child at one school and one child at the other school. How can they walk their children to school in time? Also as well, we get a lot of children coming in, um, in our particular case, coming in from the South End area. They're not walking, it's too far. I'm getting to the point where we've got all these schemes about encouraging kids to use bikes or whatever. It's not working. No. I'll get to the point where we're going to have to we're going to have to join them. We can't beat them. We've got to join them. Uh, people continuously are not going to take up on these things. So I'm a little bit concerned about that. As far as the design of the building is concerned, yeah. now it is a box with a bit of trimming on it, and and I really don't like the design. I think it could be far more sympathetic to its surroundings, the surrounding buildings. And I would also suggest that when we need to increase the school sizes like this, that Essex County Council needs to be thinking about new sites, complete new sites, new schools, and then repurpose the existing buildings. So that's my thoughts. So at this stage, I don't think I can support it. Thank you, Councillor Stepto. Uh, Councillor Harris. Thank you, Chair. There's a lot already been said that I agree with and some that I don't agree with, but um, one of the things I, I want to make a point was I heard the applicant clearly say the birth rate, the local plan, the new development uh, expressed the need for these places. So that's a given for me. The given says you need this, these places. Where, where you provide them is another thing, and this is one proposal. Now, for me, um, 
there's been some debate here about giving up this this bit of the playing field for a mupper, uh, and this, like Councillor Jowers is a new term to me, but it, it seems like that's a sensible suggestion because it's all year round. I used to play rugby as, as a kid, and I used to come back home covered in mud, and you can imagine, can't you, in the 50s and 60s, how that was like. It was it was great fun but uh, for a kid, but not so good for the parents who had to clean the other afterwards. But what about lighting? That's the first question, Chair. Is the mupper got any lighting around it? Um, is there proposals for that, or is that not debated at this scheme? Because I want to make sure that that doesn't affect the local residents and, and the, the timing and, and use of it, etc. So that's the first question. Um, the second thing I want to agree with, all the speakers that have said about the parking, uh, you're quite right, Richard, that it's, it's a perennial problem. We, we, we cater it by saying, well, won't we? We'll just go out and make a, a travel plan that says we walk to school, we cycle to school. Wonderful, wonderful. But on November the 24th, you can imagine, can't you? Go and take your, your little child to school and it's pouring a rain. It's a cold morning. You know, you're, you're, you do at work. You're going to have to drop your child off, even if it's a half a mile, in your car, because that's <laughs> what you have to do, because it's inclement, it's, it's, it's a snowy day or whatever. Um, so you're not going to stop that happening. As far as you may, you'll never encourage all those people to use mobility, uh, the, 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 the push along scooters and the and the higher scooters, the <laughs> motor scooters, um, walking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Wonderful ideas, but they they're not going to happen. So what do you do? I like the idea, uh, as been said, as Kempster Steps have said, is about having a new site somewhere and repurpose that that that's existing building. I was there with the Morgan o, the car, the Morgan Sports Car Club on s Sunday, this just gone at Great Bentley. We had a meeting there. And it was wonderful. It was it was a lovely place to be. But of course it was a Sunday. Monday morning in, in a Clement in Clement Day, completely different when outside that school it's going to be Bedlam, isn't it? And you've got two hundred more children there. And I know the papers say, and I read through them again last night um, some children will be like uh, uh, have siblings there. I understand that. Yes, that we. So there won't be totally two hundred people, parents that are trying to arrive there in one way or another. There'll be, you know, brothers and sisters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there is going to be an increase. You cannot deny there is going to be an increase in the numbers that will be dropping off Timmy and Julie and Johnny and outside that school. Um, so. We've got to think about that, and I think it's going to have to have more said about that. I was disappointed, Chair. I've got to say this. Uh, the highways made no comments about this. And I was saddened by that because I thought that, uh, you know, a couple of professionals that perhaps could say in, in, a, in a document how they thought this could be counted. Uh, TROs are great. Track of, you know, having yellow lit zigzags, but I've seen people pull up there because you and I know, Chair, you and I know, and every member that knows this, you can't have parking wardens stand there every day. You might get them once every six or ten weeks if there's so many schools to attend. So that's, I'm going to be supporting it because I don't think I've got any choice because I, I think that 200 places are needed, you know, the, the, the need is there, it's been, it's been discussed. Final comment from me over the trees, get some extra trees in there, please. I think it's in there anyway, but make sure they're sort of semi-mature ones, not sips, not whips that last three years and then fall because of lack of maintenance. Some sort of tree there that's going to be substantial in a couple of years' time. Uh, that's all I was going to say, Chair, but I will be supporting a bit reluctantly. Thank you very much indeed. There's a question there you put about the lighting. Rachel, do you want to tackle yeah, that? There's no lighting proposed for the MUPPA, and I think it would be unusual for lighting proposed for a MUPPA because it's slightly different to a, a mugger. But if they wanted lighting, they would have to submit another application. That's what I want to hear. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Harris. I've got Councillor Jarvis in a minute, but Councillor Richard Morley, the, the next one. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm kind of the, the last person, so I know I'm not going to repeat everything <laughs> everybody said. Um, only I wanted to just say I'm absolutely against this. I think the design is just a giant box, and it's right next to a conservation area. 
and a, a, a very important, I think it's listed, the, the old school, is it? I don't, can't remember if you said that. It's not listed. No, it's not listed. It's not listed. But I, I just think that it's very, very poor and we shouldn't approve it. Everybody else has said everything else I wanted to say. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. I will repeat it. Councillor Giles. Well, I, I appear to be a voice in the wilderness then, Richard. Um, first of all, just going back a bit, when I was five years old, I had to walk a mile to a bus stop and then 10 miles into Colchester. And, uh, you know, you put a raincoat on and a cap, off you went, running usually, because I was always late. This is actually county policy. It's national social policy is stop people taking their kids to school in cars. And we, we actually design in disincentives to do that. Until we change the policy, that is what we have. I, I can't help but agreeing, saying it would be wonderful you could have a drop-off area in front of the school. But that is not a policy. And that's been determined by the council over quite a number of years. Now, the other issue, of course, is the box. Well, some years ago, we used to do individual designs for schools. Oh, boy, we had all the architects flocking to us. And bizarre were some of the designs that came out. <laughs> and how frequently did some of these designs fail? They had leaky roofs. They were exotic structures that usually went two times over budget. And again, policy was that we should try to, within reasonable design guides, standardise. We were going, I think, to Skanska to do modular designs because you could, it's form versus function. And there was an architectural view and a planner's view, actually, nationally, is you make a contrast. If you've got a beautiful building, you want to keep the essence of that building. You don't want to have a pastiche next door to it. And the idea, well, I've come across this in various planning committees I've been on in the last 40 years, is some amazing modernistic schemes but it was turned down because they were too modern and it didn't fit in with the Dutch Quarter, whereas actually the ethos was it would enhance the Dutch Quarter, I'm using that as an example, by contrasting it. And from my point of view, the essence is you need a school. That's at the crux of this. It is desperately needed. And I'm actually quite pleased that they are planning, or county education services are planning ahead in the past, I have seen schools, one on my island, which had demountable zones. I suppose many of you remember those. Oh, yeah, I remember those. Yeah. 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 And <laughs> we've done amazingly to get proper, modern, warm, dry facilities for our kids. If you now want to have a shard in Great Bentley or something similar, <laughs> um, fine. But it is not policy. Policy is to provide educational need. And this place is growing like hell. You know, I, I don't know, have you got a local plan yet? Can yeah, we have, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's now being adopted. If you wish to change the whole county policy, fine. That is what we've got. Yeah. So from my point of view, I think we should carry on. I know Barrel disagrees with me. Well, I, the only thing I would say, the... Chairman, is it may be policy to house additional pupils. Of course it is. And to get them up as soon as possible. Of course it is. But do they have to have flat roofs? Do they have to look like a box? Of no. course not. No, they don't. No, I would have to agree with, with Councillor Aspinall. And in fact, in the past, we have put gables on or we've altered the pitch. And that might be a recommendation that Absolutely. could be made. But uh, I still make the argument that it is need. Uh, you know, I'd love to have some striking architectural development there. How you put that into Great Bentley, I don't know. I really don't. So I will still continue to support this because I think that with the growth in housing and the number of kids there, we need this. Uh, Councillor Jowell says, ever. Uh, make a lot of very, very relevant points. Uh, Greg Bentley has been caught, as I said, in the vacuum of plans. 
they never wanted that kind of development. And of course, mm -hmm. this county council as the uh, uh, responsible body to provide school places has found itself between the rock and our place. Mm -hmm. And they're having to retrofit uh, a site which was built in 1896 when the village was virtually a village. You know, it is now a major conurbation, and the way to London is Council Pond uh, picked up, you know, and, and that's the first thing you see when you arrive into the village as a school. Uh, Council Step Toe. Really, I was just going to pick up on a couple of points there. Um, I've got two schools in my division. One is King Edmunds, <coughs> which is currently totally. Um, managed by demountables because it was built in the 60s, it was a box shape, they had to pull it down. Yeah. Yet I've got another school down in the town built in the 1800s, it'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. It, there don't seem to be any longevity built into these new buildings. And a school like that has got to last a considerable length of time, not pull it down 20 years later. Architectural Members, we, we've had a very comprehensive discussion on this. Uh, I think the one positive for me is that uh, it does contain a huge amount of uh, uh, renewable and uh, sustainable measures, which we've now beginning to see uh, in the way of uh, photovoltaic panels and uh, uh, air source heat pump. But uh, <laughs> I've picked up quite a lot of discontent on this. Um, I would. Probably, I hate to defer things, but there is enough grounds here to uh, uh, go back to the applicant. I know that Sports England might still might want to have the case been heard uh, and have final say on it. Um, whether there's a case to defer this and get the applicant to do a bit more work on this, because obviously, uh, or I'll go to the vote, whichever uh, you. That's right, well. Can I, if you're proposing that, I'll second it. Because um, we also want to find out yeah. who I'd rather authorise those tree yeah. rules. Okay, so we, I think, can we list the reasons why we're deferring it? Uh, the main issue seems to be the removal of the trees. We then have the uh, design. We then have the uh, parking. Uh, effect on heritage asset, uh, Chairman? The, the proximity to the conservation yeah. area. Uh, Councillor Fleming. Could I just raise something else, Chair? I was a bit surprised on page 190 of the air source heat pump that it was going to be using radiators and ventilation because I've been told that actually you have to have underfloor if you're using air source heat pump. No, you don't have to. Well, OK, underfloor heating is the best delivery mechanism for an air source heat pump. I'm not an expert, right, no. but that's I people keep telling me that. So if that is, in fact, the case, then I would think that actually radiators and ventilation should not be used. That might be for the new extension. I very much the doubt. The new extension yeah. I'm talking about. Oh, the new extension, OK. For the new extension. Because the air source pump is proposed to be provided for the rest of the school as well, isn't it? No, it's just for the new Just for the extension, yeah. OK. Well, the sort of heat pump might be perfect. Richard? Yeah, Chairman, I don't, um, we're clearly going to get involved in non-planning -plan matters about um, what happens inside of the not necessarily planning matter. The issues around climate change are clearly a planning matter, and how that, but the efficiency of the heating system within the school is not, is not necessarily a planning matter. Right. But we can pass it. Could I just come back? I've, I've raised it because it was in the report. It specific, clearly said radiators and ventilation, so my attention was drawn to it. I'm just surprised that, that that's listed. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that, that's to do with the sustainability and elements of the. Chem, right. can I just jump in there because obviously on the on the issues of deferment, uh, what well obviously the trees have gone, and we can, can we can get further reason why why that's that's happened. Um, don't forget, Chairman, I wrote an extensive paper and got internal agreement on use of the Essex Quality Review Panel mm -hmm. um, um, and approved via, via the, uh, the Cabinet member um, that certain proposals should go to that Quality Review Panel. So there is an opportunity here if members cho chose to defer the application 
uh, we we could request or oh, absolutely request. It goes it goes to that quality review panel because. Uh, you probably appreciate there are lots of subjective views around design and we've talked about this a lot and comments around boxes and, and it does get very subjective and in some ways what we shouldn't be doing is necessarily criticising the architectural merit of the scheme. Or we the policies been, are what they are. We have been to an urban design team yeah. and they provided advice and there have been various iterations of this scheme and ultimately no objection from the experts that we have inside. But this scheme hasn't been to the quality review <coughs> panel. Uh, and if members chose to defer the application, um, that could be a ground to defer it on, that, it, that there's an instruction that this application should go to that quality review panel and provide that independent advice back to the committee rather than members get um, embroiled in, I like it, I don't like it, for various reasons. We have yeah. that independent view, and I think that might be helpful. It's quite sensible. Okay, so I propose that it is deferred. I've had a uh, second of by Councillor Hardware. Uh, Rachel, do you want to summarise the uh, grounds for um, uh, deferment? Uh, so it's the removal of trees, the design, the parking aspects, the impact on heritage. Um, I think those were the main, the main I think those were the main points. Mm -hmm. And also to recommend that it goes to the uh, Essex Design you. Panel. Uh, for uh, for their comments to be repeated. Um, I will be very happy to write to the applicants and make those points loud and clear. Uh, I will now go to the vote for deferments. Uh, all those in favour to defer the application, please show. All those against? And any abstentions? No. Uh, there was a proposal to uh, approve, to go with the application, but there wasn't a second that I'll withdraw it. Yeah. Okay, that's lovely. Uh, okay, members, thank you very much. So it was a very uh, useful debate, and uh, there's a message to be sent to the applicant there. Thank you. Uh, we now go to application 5.1. Uh, we'll just give Rachel a couple of minutes and Tom to promise me. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Remembrance Avenue in uh, Bewley Park, Chelmsford. Erection of a new two form entry primary school. Complete with playing field, play area, and landscaping. Over to you, Tom. Thank you, Chairman, and good afternoon, members. Um, this application concerns a proposed new two-form entry primary school with associated playing fields, park play areas, parking and landscaping of the land off Remembrance Avenue in Bewley in Chelmsford. Um, just for a bit of context to start with, I'm sure um, most of you will be aware that Bewley forms a major element of Chelmsford's future housing and economic growth um, forming part of the Chelmsford Garden community. The outline permission for this part of Bewley, um, the red line area or, on the screen, was granted by Chelmsford City Council and established the consent for a mixed use residential development comprising up to 3,600 dwellings, commercial floor space, education and community provision, um, a North Chelmsford radio distributor road and um, Bewley railway, rail station. <laughs> The first phase of housing, um, Bewley Heath, which was um, to the south of the site, began construction in June 2014 with Bewley Park um, here. Um, Bewley Park all through school, which actually came before yes. the sort of this committee in 2017, um, taking its first pupil intake in September 2018. As part of the Section 106 accompanying the original outline permission issued by Chelmsford, a secondary primary second primary school site was secured um, and that's this area here uh, and that site was secured in context of um, projected pupil um, primary, primary pupil um, need as, as the residential development um, evolved through Bewley. Um, the site is located in phase three of Bewley and will eventually, as construction works continue, be, develop, um, be enveloped by housing to the west and east. The site fronts onto Remembrance Avenue, which is a bus route, and will connect to the RDR via roundabouts to the northeast and northwest. 
On the western boundary of the site is another road, New Hall Way, which as the name suggests, provides a northern access into New Hall. This, uh, this road also provides the primary access into the school site, which has already been constructed through the parameters of the Section 106 issued by Chelmsford City Council. The report before you provides some further commentary on the immediate residential context which will likely follow, and I think that's on pages 150 to 151. Essex School Educational um, Organisational Service have been monitoring demand for school places in the area and have made the decision to, to attempt to bring forward this site now, as projections indicate a need for an additional reception intake in September 2024. 20, the school would then increase year on year with an intake every year. Initial proposals were submitted for the site last year as part of a comprehensive pre-application discussions with ourselves and consultees, and this included a presentation to the Essex Quality Review Panel at that point. Uh, before moving on to the, to the actual proposals, just to give members a, a visual appreciation of the site as it, as it currently sits today. And this is taken looking east on Remembrance Avenue at the junction with New Hallway. Um, the school site is, is directly in, in the forefront of that picture and you can almost see the, the entirety of, of the site. Um, you have zone V of, of Bewley in, in, in the background and then you can just make out some, some floodlights associated um, with New Hall School to be to the south of the site. Um, these photos are on New Hall Way and show the, the vehicle entrance into the school site and also at the end of the, the road on the picture on the left you can see the, where the road goes down into to access New Hall School. This again is taken, least, um, take, taken looking east but further along Remembrance Avenue. Um, the photo shows current development works on the um, opposite side of the road, zone V of Bewley, um, sorry, zone W of Bewley. Um, the photo also shows the location of the bus stop on Remembrance Avenue, um, which would be in front of the proposed school entrance and uh, one of the laybys which also exists. Um, this is another view from sort of looking at the same point but on the opposite side of the road. You can see, see the, the aforementioned lay-by, the bus stop, and then there's another lay-by where what appears to be a road sweeper is, is currently going parked. Um, this slide contains three photographs. Um, the top image is taken looking south towards the eastern corner of the site, um, and the bottom two images are taken on the path which runs between the school um, eastern boundary Remembrance Avenue and Footpath 14, which runs along the south of the boundary between the school and, and New Hall. The image on the left shows, um, on the bottom left, sorry, shows two trees which are on the eastern boundary of the school, school, but outside of the red line area. These trees would not be impacted by the proposals. Um, and the photo on the right shows the landscaping bund, which was secured by Chelmsford City Council, <coughs> the wider commission. Um, to mitigate the potential visual impacts not only of this development but the adjacent parcels to New Hall and the fact that that is a, a Grade 1 listed building with a registered park and garden to, in front of it. Moving on to the proposals and the application before you. Um, as suggested, this seeks permission for a new two-form, two-full entry primary school, 420 pupils. Um, the primary school is proposed to be accommodated within a two-storey building located towards the northeast corner of the site. The building will provide classrooms for reception aged pupils all the way through to year six. In addition, room for, rooms for pupils with special educational needs, staff rooms, offices, a nurture room, group rooms, a sports hall and kitchen would be provided. I will show you some, some floor plans in a minute. Um, to support the school and its function, a car park is proposed to the southwest of the site. Access to this car park would be gained via the vehicular accesses, which are, has already been constructed and you've seen in the photographs. The car park would provide 28 car parking spaces, including three bays, which would have access to electric charging points. In addition to the 28 standard spaces, two motorcycle spaces and two disabled spaces are proposed, with 50 cycle hoops, which is 100 spaces, 100 cycle spaces for pupils, four cycle hoops um, for staff, so eight spaces, and 40 um, scooter um, spaces. Externally, the school will be supported by hard and soft play areas, including a fully fenced mugger, which would not have any external lighting, playing field, and a habitat. 
garden <coughs> adjacent to, to the mugger. That's that's that part of the the, um, the playing field. Access to the school and visitors is proposed from three um, pedestrian points. It's proposed at the north east um, north, north west corner. Sorry, would serve. Oh, would serve as the um, main entrance to the school office for visitors and for key stage one pupils. So key stage one would be going in here and then into the building. There's a further entrance to, to the east, which would primarily be serving key stage two students. So they'd be coming through here and then accessing the school uh, down that into, into the key stage two entrance. And then a third access point offer a um, new hallway, which would be for reception students, which would be coming in and accessing reception and reception classes through there. With regard to the internal layout, the general arrangement drawings um, on the screen principally show how the floors would be accessed by a central circulation area corridor on, on both levels. So <coughs> the corridor, central corridor is the ground floor on, on the top, and then first floor it, it's replicated. Um, with a staircase at, at either end, so staircase one here, and I get the staircase to there and there. Um, on the ground floor, two classrooms for reception, two classrooms for year one, and two classrooms for year two are proposed, together with a nurture room, various group and meeting rooms, and offices, including the main school reception. The western part of the of the ground floor which is slightly slightly lower in, in, in scale, um, circa I think about 1.5 storeys, would comprise the school hall, kitchen, and then there's a plant room as well. On the first floor, two classrooms are proposed for each year's three, four, five, and six, together with a practical room, studio, and the main staff room. Um, access between the floors, as suggested, would be by the two staircases, but there's also a lift to ensure the building is fully um, DDA compliant. On the roof, um, the majority of, of the two-storey flat roof element contains solar panels, which together with the air source, heat pumps, and heat ventilation use, units proposed as part of the development would seek to ensure that the building would operate at net zero carbon during operation. In terms of the external appearance of the building, the building is proposed in three main external materials, a buff handmade brick, a blue engineered brick, and vertical larch cladding. With regard to the material palette, a gable motif is proposed to be created through the application of the, di um, the different brick colours. The applicant has suggested that the building has been designed to represent a fresh and contemporary aesthetic. In terms of the blue brick motif, the applicant has suggested that this adds interest to the facade and is suitable for a primary school environment. The playfulness of the motif creates a standout architecture style for the primary school in the context of the beauty development. Um, the applicant has sought to confirm the exact specification of the bricks proposed as part of this application, um, stock photos of which are, sh are shown on, on the screen before you. The applicant has also provided photos of other buildings where handmade and engineered bricks have been paired together to aid understanding of the proposed transition and submitted detail setting out the drawing and um, the detail setting out drawing as how the proposed 45 degree angle of the motif would, would be achieved for a typical stretch of bond brick application. Um, just with some proposed visuals of the development on the screen, I'll give members a quick summary of the consultation responses which have been received. Members will note from the representation se section of the report that we have received two letters of representation. One of these was relatively generic, simply seeking to ensure that sufficient parking was secured as part of the development, with the other slightly more detailed and raising questions about drainage, which was subsequently re resolved during the course of determination. In terms of statutory consultees, I'm pleased to say that no consultee has sought to object to the development in principle. The reason, however, the application has been presented to them is that Chelmsford City Council's response was worded as a no objection subject to a number of changes or amendments being secured. As detailed in the report, Chelmsford requested higher quality cycle stores, that the height of the boundary fencing be reduced and removed in some places, and that a sample panel for the external materials be secured by way of condition before these are agreed. Taking well, could you repeat that last bit? Um, so Chelmsford requested a sample panel of the materials to be submitted before they're agreed as part of the plan application. Thank you. 
Um, as detail, um, taking each of these comments in turn, the Highway Authority has raised no objection to the specification of the cycle stores. It is accepted that the cycle stores proposed are modular, modular and functional, however they would provide adequate weather protection for cycles stored. The view expressed by Chelmsford that better or higher quality provision should be secured has not been taken forward. For the avoidance of doubt, this is not on the basis that it's considered that higher quality stores would not improve the development, but it's on the basis that the stores proposed are not considered fundamentally unacceptable. With regard to the boundary fence, a 2.4 metre fence is proposed around the entire boundary of the school site, with the exception of a section in the northwest corner where the building would act as a secure line. Chelmsford consider the 2.4 metre fencing unacceptable and have requested this be reduced to 1.8 metres. The applicant has confirmed that the proposed 2.4 metre fencing is, is to conform with the Department for Education specifications. It is accepted within the appraisal before you that the balance needs to be struck between the street, street scene impact and the need for safeguarding. However, this is an allocated site for an educational establishment. It's considered that therefore seeking to restrict, restrict or limit delivery <coughs> of such an establishment to DFE standards or specifications would seem slightly counterintuitive. This request has as, has as such not been carried forward as part of this recommendation either. In terms of the fencing to be removed, if you refer to the drawing extract on, on page 160 of the agenda, is it accepted that if the, fen the fencing proposed directly in front of the school was to be removed, the public realm would feel less constrained and, and cl less cluttered. However, the reason for this fencing is that there is a fire escape door within the school hall, which would otherwise open out onto the road if the fencing was not there. The applicant did re review moving the fire escape. However, this was not possible. It is acknowledged that the fencing does, to some degree, detract from what would otherwise be a clean frontage. But noting the fencing is set back from the street, it is not considered that this alone would be, a, would be a feature which would warrant a refusal. Lastly, with regard to the material samples, officers are content with the information which has been submitted and do not consider a sample condition necessary. If members were so minded, such a condition could nevertheless be added to the recommendation. That said, it should be noted that no objection to the material palette and or request for such a condition has been raised by the Council's urban design consultant. Overall, it is considered that there is clear policy support within the National Planning Policy Framework for improved or new educational facilities to cater to existing or identified demand, as is the case here. The provision for a primary school on this site has previously been established through the wider outline permission for Bewley, and an assessment of the proposed development has failed to identify any significant impacts or overriding concerns. A justification for the proposed school layout and the material palette has been advanced. And whilst it is acknowledged that there are some reservations from consultees, it is considered that overall the development would complement the local area. Subject to the imposition of appropriate conditions, the proposals are accordingly considered policy compliant and representative of sustainable development, and it's recommended favourably to members. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Tom, for your presentation. Uh, we have a speaker, Mr Michael Ward, which I believe is with us. Mr Ward, if you like to make your way to the... Uh, to the desk in front of you. You will have three minutes and uh, Emma will give you a prompt when there's 30 seconds left. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, it's good. good afternoon now, members. Uh, my name is Michael Ward from Stratton Parker. And I speak this morning on behalf of RG Carter and the County Council's infrastructure delivery team. Uh, this application was submitted to the County Planning Authority in December of last year, following an extensive period of pre-application engagement with your officers, those at Chelmsford City Council, the Essex Quality Review Panel, the Highway Authority and the Lead Local Flood Authority. Various revisions to the initial proposals have been made in response to feedback given. The application could have been determined by officers under delegated powers. However, as, as Tom said, due to an outstanding objection from Job City Council, this application instead needs to be considered by yourselves. Despite revisions being made to the scheme in response to Kevin, in response to the comments given by the City Council, they maintain an objection in respect of the boundary fencing. The proposed boundary fencing is 2.4 metres high, which is a requirement of the Academy Trust that will run the school and is sought for security purposes. 
Whilst the City Council have requested a lower fence, this is not considered to be enough of a deterrent to prevent unauthorised access at evenings and weekends, which the Academy Trust has experienced elsewhere. In any instance, the school would be entitled to install a two metre high fence as permitted development, and therefore express consent is only really required for an additional 40 centimetres. The City Council has also expressed concern about fencing around the entrance to the school, but this is considered necessary to provide enclosure at this key part of the site adjacent to Remembrance Avenue in order to safeguard future pupils. Many of the homes at Beaulieu are now occupied and with other zones in the surrounding area also being developed, there is a growing need for additional school places here. The existing Beaulieu school is expected to be at full capacity next year. The design team has worked extensively with officers to put forward a scheme that is functional for the Academy Trust whilst responding to the site parameters and the context of the wider, wider Beaulieu neighbourhood. Such parameters include the access to the site, which has been established through an earlier consent and is now constructed. Amendments to the scheme have been made in response to comments given by officers, and the applicant does believe that the proposals now before you represent a high quality development that will not only provide important school places, but also a range of facilities for local children, including extensive playing fields, other play areas and a habitat garden. The new school has also been designed with enhanced fabric specification and energy efficient measures, measures to reduce energy demand and carbon emissions. 30 seconds. The package of information submitted to the application confirms no adverse impacts will arise from the development. We have worked with your officers to minimise conditions by providing significant de detail up front to allow a prompt start on site, hopefully later this year, this school to be ready for the start of the 2024 term. Uh, with all matters considered, I respectfully ask you to agree with your officer's recommendation and grant plan permission. Thank you. Thanks so much again, Mr Ward. Glad to make your way back. Valerie, thanks so much. I go to members. They've got Council Steptoe first, I think. That's quite nice. Thank you, Chairman. I'm not quite sure where to start on this. Um, well, I'll start on a positive, um, going from what we did on the previous application, I'm pleased to see that it's a new school in a new facility. But it looks to me like a box with camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of a battleship, the way it would be camouflaged. At the end of the day, it's a box with a few triangles painted on it. So I... I I'm, I don't quite know what to say about that, really. With regards to the solar panels on the roof, I'm very keen to see solar panels and what have you. But the question comes is, for the amount of solar panels on the roof there, what happens with the maintenance of the flat roof? Because we know flat roofs, the good life for a flat roof is 10 years, if you're lucky. How do you deal with that? Do they have solar panels? have to be completely removed, or whatever. Hmm. So that's a concern I have. Picking up on the um, site, I don't know if officers can put up the picture of where the, the cars were parked on the road, the one with the dust cart. Hmm. I don't know if officers can put that back up on the screen. They'll try. Okay. Um, there's an opportunity here. I know perhaps it goes against a bit of policy to have put in a drop-off and pick-up point here. The footpath is wide enough. There is a lay-by there for the bus. Absolutely fine. But there's now a grass verge between the road and the footpath. Pupils are going to get dropped off in the road, walk straight across the nice muddy footpath, of grass verge onto the footpath. Why was not any thought given to extend that lay-by to be created a drop off and pick up one? It just seems common sense to me. I don't understand why. So there are my concerns at this particular stage, Chairman. I'll, I'll leave it at there, but I may want to come back a little bit later. Okay, thank you. Tom, do you want to address those three uh, issues? Um, I'll start with the box and come up with the <laughs> um, in, in terms of, of, of the box, it, it's, it's a flat roof boxed building. Um, it follows the DFE uh, template 
designs for a school of this size, and it's the, on that basis which we secure our Section 106 contribution, so our budget is based on the delivery of a building to that specification. Um, that is what infrastructure delivery, also the applicant has been told from DFEs what they should be designing and delivering in terms of schools, and that is why the application is as it is, as it is before you. That's not me saying that it's necessarily right, but that is the process, how we've got to where we are. Um, in terms of the lay-by in front of the school site and it, it representing the drop-off, during the course of determination, um, probably contrary to what has been said during this meeting, as officers we've actually been seeking to get rid of those lay buyers or introduce um, restrictions on that, on the fact that the policy position that we are seeking to deliver is that no one should be coming to school, shouldn't be driving to school, so therefore we shouldn't be encouraging it, and we've got effectively two lay buyers which allow one hour parking usually in front of the school. So, um, from an officer perspective to where we're going, of your, your position, uh, we are, I guess, at loggerheads, but that, I, I, that's not saying that, yeah, I'm fully accepting that in the real world that people will be driving to the school and looking to drop off their children. Um, so, as it stands in terms of lay-by, um, Remembrance Avenue isn't actually adopted yet. It's going through the adoption process with the Highway Authority. The Highway Authority will decide on um, the lay buyers and whether they stay or whether the li lining or the signage is added to those and they become bus only loading bays primarily for the school or whether they stay as is and offering um, one hour parking. There is um, restrictions on the rest of Remembrance um, Avenue so that they wouldn't be allowed to be parking up onto the verge. Um, I think they've also got an order in place to prevent verge um, parking onto the verge and the verge actually acts as part of the um, suds attenuation drainage for the road scheme itself. So it's a, a very small, if you like, swale ditch. Um, but I appreciate that doesn't give comfort to your answers. That maybe gives an explanation as to how we are, where we are. Flat roof maintenance? Um, I, I don't know the answer to that question. It's not something that I've been, it's, it's been raised. I couldn't give you an answer. No. I'm going to be planning related anyway. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to come back? Can I step I'll up? reserve. Okay, moment. that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. What other comments? Councillor uh, Harris, your next speaker. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, it, it's a, a a need. Obviously, we we know that there's a need. It's it's uh, uh, it's, it's already declared. It's it, what is wanted <coughs> in the year's time. I, I assume. Um, to me, the plan uh, looks. What it is, it's, it's a school, it's a box, as has already been said. There's a plan field, there's a, there's a mugger, and all the rest of the facilities you'd expect that any person would want their child to go to. Now, what happens when I've gone, and all of us as councillors have gone from here in 20 years' time? 20? And somebody Very optimistic, Councillor uh, Harris. <laughs> somebody, somebody comes back with a proposal to increase the need in 20 years' time. What do you do? Do you take the plan field that we've just agreed in this proposal that should be there? Or is there an alternative? I suggest that maybe the developer or the planner or the developers ought to think about maybe they could go up another floor in years to come. Is this infrastructure there to add to the top of that in 20 years' time when I'm no more, but somebody's child wants to go to that site? You won't have to take the plan field there then. We could ask that question now and ensure ourselves that we've got longevity in that site that the school plan field won't be taken away. To me, a sensible, common sense way of looking at things, plan for the future. Now, if that's an option, that's great. And I hope the answer to that is yes, or maybe at least. Um, the second point I want to make, Chair, is about the school plan and about encouraging people. There's lovely footpaths there well designed, laid out, uh, and it's not happened by accident, it's been planned, isn't it? So lighting on footpaths is what I raised, Chairman. It is not something that we can perhaps legislate here because it's not in the, the planning authority, but I'd like to think about, maybe the local plan, the local highways plan could think about that, making, making sure there's enough lighting on footpaths. You showed a couple of footpaths off 
off-road there that, that children may take that route to school, but they certainly won't take that route to school at half past eight on a, on a dark December morning or half past three on a dark, dark December afternoon. If we could think about just hanging on an idea about, again, making sure that we minimise the need to go by car by having street lighting on footpaths. Solar ones, maybe, for, for climate change, etc., to make sure that, you know, they are self-sufficient and we don't provide electricity for them, that'd be great. But that's something that I think those two things would make me more amenable to supporting this, and, and, and I'll be voting yes anyway, Chair. Charles, thank you very much indeed. Tom, do you want to address the uh, foundations? Are they, I believe the foundation have a standard that you can add the floor above, having been involved in the house extension itself, I think we're told that we could. But the solar lighting of path is a very, very relevant, because my, one of my parish councils is picking up the cost of lighting a footpath to encourage people to come to work. Tom. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Harris, in terms of the expansion, it is something which has actually been considered by the applicant. Um, they are projecting that this will need to be a, a free FE school in the future. Uh, and the area that has been identified is, is the bit to the east of the existing school. So it would be, be this area, um, which would allow, which wouldn't encroach onto the, the playing field area itself. So it would be taking out the informal part of, of um, uh, the amenity area for the key stage one, which would be replaced elsewhere, but it wouldn't actually encroach onto the playing field. So they, they have do have sufficient area within the school site to expand the existing building form without it being a separate entity um, across the playing field. So that is, um, if you like, the scheme has been considered to allow for expansion in the future if needs be. Could it be built up on the existing footprint if need be? I don't know whether the whether the foundations are sufficient to take a third floor. The current proposal would be an expansion of, of the building to, to the east. Okay, lighting. Um, in terms of, of um, lighting and footpaths, um, all of the existing footpaths are on Remembrance Avenue, Newhall Way, they've already been, been, been lit and they're part of the Chelmsford City um, Sustainable Transport I think, package that they've put together for the whole of Bewley. In terms of the, the footpath, which was shown on the photos, that one isn't lit, but that is an informal access, if you like, a connection point between Remembrance Avenue and the footpath to the south. Footpath 14 also isn't lit, but it's not a, it's not a made track. It's um, sort of an informal path. Um, that is also the point between New Hall and the school. So I'd imagine putting lighting on there would have some, some heritage impacts. So um, that is all outside the red line anyway, and would largely be within the gift of, of Chelmsford and their wider master planning for Beulah. Do I come back? Uh, yes, I agree with that. A local highways panel would probably look at that then, maybe. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Jowes. Well, thank you, Chairman. I'm, I, I'm almost lost for words. This is a magnificent box, you know. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, of course, it's right adjacent to one of our most spectacular buildings, yeah. which is a Tudor New Hall. So I'm not being grossly unfair to make any comparison to any comments that might have been made on the last application. So my, my brother is a, an architect and a town planner and he calls these sort of um, bits and pieces of blue mixed with it. It's pixie, well I better not say it really, mm -hmm. it's what bears do in the wood. And, um, <laughs> what they're doing is making it look as though um, this, this magnificent box is, is kind of echoing mm. and it's a pastiche of New Hall. Now, actually, I'd say I've got no problems with this because, again, um, form follows function. It's a need and it's a good thing that this is being built in anticipation of. But where I have some problems is Chelmsford City Council's basic argument is on the fencing. Mm. And... Um, is this going to be a new HMP Bewley Park? <laughs> no. For young offenders. <laughs> with, a, with a monster fence. But well, it hasn't come out that clearly, although it does, I think, in the report. The hedge is being planted in front of the fence, I gather. And okay. that, that will really mitigate it. So I can understand if you're... In Pastunias, you do need security. I went did a function last week at uh, 
a lo one of our local junior schools. And I mean, you know, you have to have fingerprints and ID and the FBI and God knows what. So and I can you, understand yeah. the logic why they're wanting to do this. And of course, the burn of contention is only 40 centimetres one way or another. If a reasonable hedge, as is proposed, is put in and it grows and is allowed to grow to 2.4 metres, you actually won't see the fence. Mm. So I'm, I'm a little surprised at, at, at CTC, at Chelsea City Council's um, strong objection to it. So overall, yeah, I'm, I think it's, it's good. It's the modern design scheme. Um, I would have loved to see gables and turrets and barley corn chimneys and you know, wainscoting and God knows what else. But be real. This is what function produces for us. We want a good, efficient school. The kids are not going there to do a seven-year course in architecture. They're going to get an education. And if that is produced and made by this, you know, the, the older I get, the more I realise that I, I, I'm not that concerned. I'd, lo I'd have loved to see a sloping ridge on this of some kind. Yes. And it would have looked great. But it comes to an element of money. We are funding this. And if it does the job, and it looks moderate, I can't say I'm massively impressed with this sort of so-called copy of New Hall, I have no problems with it. But I just find it slightly bizarre that we're now taking one instance of very much alongside classic Tudor building, and yet, just a few miles to the east, well, we didn't. So I'm now going to propose that we accept this. I was just about to ask you that, Councillor yeah. Jales. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so the application has been proposed. Uh, Councillor Fleming, you're the next speaker. Thank you, Chair. Um, Tommy, I'd be pleased to hear that I quite like the design and quite like the blue brick. Um, uh, I still have concerns about parent parking, but less so on this site because it's obviously a new build. It's part of a, a development that's been planned with a master plan. So it's the, the whole site is far less constrained. There will be issues because there always are, but l much less so uh, on, on a new site and a, a, you know, a development with a master plan. So um, I'm content. Thank you, Councillor Fleming. Uh, Councillor Hardway. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, it's commendable to have uh, infrastructure first, um, the school being built before the houses. Um, Tom said that there have been very few uh, objections. That's because there are no houses around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> they'd want to see a school next door, believe me. <laughs> but, uh, I can pretty much uh, guarantee that if there were houses around this, there would be objections. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I can pretty much guarantee that uh, once the, 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 uh, the uh, houses are around there and the school's operating, um, there's something psychological in parents that uh, they have to drop little Johnny, exactly. Johnette, off at the gate. Nothing else will do. So uh, this is the real world, of course. Uh, despite um, all the policies to try and dissuade <coughs> this from happening, some are mighty successful, others aren't. Um, at the moment, they don't work. So at the moment, in the real world, when this is built and the houses are built, there is going to be a problem with park. I mean, I've, I've looked at the, the photographs. Uh, you can see where the gates are. You know where everybody's going to park uh, and stand. Uh, it is going to be a problem. Uh, and until um, Essex has a policy of, yes, uh, dissuading people, but providing a bit of a stick, so kind of red routes and static enforcement cameras, um, they are not going to pro uh, solve the problem, they're not going to dissuade people. Uh, but looking at this application, um, there has been a deliberate um, decision, obviously, in, in, in accordance with policy, not to provide a drop-off point. Because I can see that the car park there, uh, all the stuff there could be moved eastward, that way, um, to provide uh, an internal drop-off point, um, which would help the situation in the future. Uh, in Harlow, we have um, uh, a fairly recent school, which has been up about 11 years, which has a drop-off point. There is no traffic problems outside the school whatsoever. Another one, SFG, which I don't think came to this. No, it went to Harlow. Um, Harlow. That had a drop-off point, big one, uh, and there was no problems until the head teacher decided to close it. 
Uh, and now all of the parents and the residents are up in arms wanting zebra crossings and parking restrictions and whatever. Um, so we really need to address it at a policy level as to what actually we're going to do, what we're going to enforce. Uh, but it probably too late to this one, uh, so I will be supporting it. It does seem to have all the right elements. <coughs> I think, you know, before I go to the next speaker, my council government, uh, officers are going to work with policies, and the policies are where they are, and therefore that's why there is no drop-off point being provided, and, and we're all on the same on the same um, aim sheet on that one. Uh, council government. Thank you, Chairman. I like it. Uh, it is a box. It's, well, it's got some bit of a detail in it anyway, a brick detailing, which is which is quite nice, so it takes away from the squareness and uh, one or two other things. Um, I do take uh, uh, Councillor Lepto's uh, uh, on the drop-off, uh, the, the lay-by at the front of the, the building. Uh, we've got a school in, in um, U Hall in Harlow. The parents pull up at the front there. The kids run through the greenery and all the bushes that were planted are gone now. <laughs> so, so why plant somewhere where they know that the parents are going to pull up? And it's a natural thing, even if there's any red line there, they'll pull up, drop them off and drive off. The kids will run across the green area and crush the bushes or whatever. So, yep, yeah, um, I'm, otherwise I'm with it, but I think they need to consider you know, making a, that area that lay by the front into a proper drop-off area. Uh, I don't be used for parking. The morning's not so bad, is it? It's the, it's the afternoons when they, they get there earlier and earlier, so they've got, they park outside the front gate. You know, so some of them are there for probably an hour waiting, you know. Anyway, thank you, John. Some tourists that put their bitch tail there first, yeah. without yes. naming names. Uh, Councillor Pond. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Well, if the, I, I was most impressed by this design at, when I first opened up the agenda online. But the reason was that, that I was thinking the profile delineated in engineering brick was actual roof and gables. And I would be the most enthusiastic exponent of this, uh, most enthusiastic advocate, but actually it is, as someone else has said, another two-storey box with a flat roof and PV panels to ameliorate, ameliorate that harm. The, the blue bricks are actually almost a profile of the Victorian school in Staples Road Loughton in my division. Um, so, so they're authentic to that extent. And uh, now, uh, that sort of construction I know um, would have complemented the Essex design guide to which the rest of uh, Bewley is really a very good example. Um, I started my education uh, in, in an Essex school and continued it for seven years. And every, um, every morning I went through a doorway marked in most lovely cursive uh, and, and stone masonry. EEC 1913. EEC standing, of course, for Essex Education Committee, ooh, ooh. not the County Council. Uh, and that, that school was equipped with cupolas, gables, turrets, and all the other things that uh, John <laughs> mentioned. Now, I think we have gone far too far along the line of plainness. Um, and in particular, in this, this area, because the whole ethos of Beaulieu is Essex Design Guide, varied architectural and domestic styles, but somebody mentioned that we are having to compare this from uh, with the Grade 1 listed New Hall Convent, which is adjacent. And, um, you know, I don't suggest we construct a pastiche in New Hall, but we do have to have some regard how, how far, I don't know if the officers can tell, because I can't tell from the papers, how far this uh, construction is likely to be from New Hall. Yeah, I know it's not immediately adjacent. Do you just want to pick that up first before Councillor Pond I'll, I'll, I'll just get a measurement for you. Yeah, OK. Well, I'll just say while you're looking it up, this is Grade 1 listed. There are very few Grade 1 listed buildings, especially secular buildings, in Essex. So we do have to have some regard to the uh, surroundings of this site. 
A fencing, I do not think, is a, a, a real problem. I, I don't think chums should have too much worry on that. Um, if they need to plant in front or behind it a good deal of quickset or holly, uh, that they will soon get their um, landscaping. But we could include a, um, a condition if it's not implicit in the planning application, how that's to be done. So on the whole, uh, Mr Chairman, I'm... Although I have had several animadversions to this design, I can't see how we can get away without consenting it. But to my mind, it's a pretty poor uh, imitation of what Essex was doing 110 years ago, E to the C, 1930. That's why I've always been such an enthusiastic proponent of the European Communion. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have to say that when I first looked at the uh, design, I thought, honestly, thought it was gables there. But yeah. sadly, when I read on, <laughs> engineer bricks. And it's what the what architects call a trompe l'oeil. Absolutely. You know, Deceive the eye. <laughs> Tom, did you find the information? How far is the from yep, the so one? It's probably about 200 metres to from the southern boundary of the school playing field to, to New Hall, okay. and the actual building, and then three, 300 metres to where the new building will be. That distance for another 100 metres between. Okay. Um, and I would just sort of add that, that Chelmsford, as part of the wider master plan, have looked at New Hall and the engineered bund, which is a, a 12 metre standoff between the southern bit yeah. and then the school site, is what Chelmsford have come forward and said that this should allow the school site to come forward in an inappropriate manner without necessarily having to have too much consideration to the impact to, to New Hall itself. Thank you for that. Councillor Stepto. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I, despite some of my reservations, uh, I don't think anybody has, but I'd be happy to second them. To take on Councillor Giles' proposal. Proposal. Uh, picking up on Councillor Giles' one point there, various things, perhaps some pargeting on the uh, building. Might be about Why not? I, I thought Sorry. it's um, <laughs> pargeting on a box. Well, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just a thought. Um, not the but I, think, I think once the landscaping is... Uh, you know, the trees have grown in. I think it will start to blend into the, to the background a little bit more. The pictures do show a number of trees in place. I'd perhaps like to see a little bit more than that, but uh, um, perhaps that's something that the pupils themselves may encourage. But uh, no, I'm pleased to see that it is um, a new school on a new site. But have we still have one or two reservations. Not always that luxury position that can the council find themselves in. Uh, I think you've uh, seconded. I don't have any other speakers. Uh, oh, yeah, Councillor Aspinall, sorry. I did indicate any issues. Um, yeah. Uh, I like the uh, camouflage box. So I think that's a good description. And why can't we camouflage our boxes in the future? Um, it's an effort that's been made. It's not one that I would readily accept, but there is a need, obviously, that's been established. Uh, and two things. One, um, the grass verge out front, could we consider, probably not a planning consideration, grass creep instead of just grass? Uh, it would do the same thing of draining off, but it would preserve rather than um, have in a couple of months after opening, just a, a lot of mud there where people have bumped up the curbs. Um, also, is it possible to condition, taking Councillor Harris's point, the, the foundations will take an extra storey or two above for future expansion, rather than take up land, not rather than, but in addition to, because this school is going to need more and more places in the future. It will do. Yeah. Or, or we're going to play, um, build more. Uh, and lastly, we, Councillor Jowers, uh, remark about its cost. We're building this and it's going to cost. Well, my primary school in Doddinghurst was, was pre Victorian uh, and it had a slate roof. And to my knowledge, that's still there, may have been adjusted over the years, but hasn't been replaced. But our flat roofs have got to be replaced 10 years or just under. And the 
So putting up a picture roof may be cost effective going forward. <coughs> it might be more expensive at the time, and I understand that we've got a, an issue of producing this quickly. And this is my, this is better than um, the bounderables. There you have it, Chairman. Is it possible to condition this to take? Thank you, Councillor Aspen. Richard, do you want to come in on the condition uh, well, of the foundation? Chairman, then that, I go to Tom. Yeah, for that. I mean, I just come back on that. Yeah, it's a it's a fair point, but it would it would be unreasonable to can uh, to condition uh, the foundations um, to be able to take something in the future that may or may not happen. Uh, it would be unreasonable because it, you know it would add. It's not the development that we have in front of us, and and the unreasonability it, it would add additional costs to the project. Uh, without good planning ground, and in any case, building regulations would cover the suitability of the foundations to support the building. Uh, in any case, but the the yeah, I, I do understand the point. I mean, um, Tom's explained that you know got me thinking about what what happened quite a few years ago is we didn't get sufficient land from developers to cater for potential um, site increase in the future. So that actually forced where where, where we got confined sites, it forced to look at two story development to take um, uh, uh, additional pupils and that and that need. And often a two story development may not be appropriate within that site. Um, but that was the only option. But now we're, we're dealing with this much better, I think, as an authority and actually securing larger areas of land to look at then um, um, potential expansion, and, sorry, the need to construct on a two-storey, <coughs> which is what Tom's talked about for this particular development, so a condition wouldn't be appropriate, requiring additional foundations for something that may not happen in the future. So there's already an understanding, as you explained, Tom, that <coughs> it's been identified next to the building will be there set aside for for a third uh, form of ambition. So, so the, I think the 10 year plan, I think at the end of the 10 years, it's potentially identifying a need for additional full form of entry in this group area. And at this site is potentially got the, the ability to cater for that. And as part of the early works or the brief that's gone out from infrastructure delivery, it's designing the layout to cater for that going forward. That's good, Jim, because that coincides with re roofing it. A couple of games on top. You want to be tough when the uh, games on, no. on the fake grass thing. <laughs> so so when, when, when we bought our last house, the uh, uh, last year we had the best grass of the neighbourhood because section that was then in fake grass. Do you want to pick that up? Um, the, the grass verges in front of the, the school site are actually outside the red line boundary, so they, they will be <laughs> come. The, uh, the, 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 the adopted highway, so it'll be within the, the highway authorities' gift to, to decide how they, they yeah. treat and maintain. Don't put the question, there. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, I don't have any other speakers. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, I will now go to the vote. All those in favour, please show. Uh, all those against? And any abstentions? Emma, would you like to confirm? Nine in favour, one abstention. So. so therefore the application is therefore approved. Thank you very much indeed, Tom. Um, we'll now move on to agenda item six, which is information mm -hmm. items. Uh, but with 6.1, holiday in Chelmsford, there is a decision item on that one, which is in, uh, in the hands of uh, Mr. Sean Long. Over to you, Sean. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, councillors. Um, I'll just give you a quick summary. Obviously, hope you had a chance to already have a look at the report. Um, so in 2019, uh, the area land is showing the <coughs> land there off of Hollow Lane. Uh, we were notified of importation, deposit, storing and spreading of waste. Um, initially, we were working in conjunction with the Environment Agency, but following uh, further importation, the county body considered it expedient to serve a temporary stop notice in the 19. Uh, further material was imported during the 28 day period. Um, and uh, therefore, uh, we tried to establish land ownership. The PCM was issued an individual who claimed ownership of the land, uh, noting that the land uh, was unregistered on the land registry. Uh, I'll just also just show you, uh, that's just an aerial shot there of the land concerned as well. Um, let's get forward. So, so that's it just there, just give you a visual of, of how it sort of looked in 2019. Uh, following the sort of importation and mainly the sort of after it being spread. Um, 
Although the importation uh, ceased, um, the material remained, and due to the harm being caused, uh, we considered it expedient to serve an enforcement notice in January 20. Uh, following the requirements of that enforcement notice, uh, a visit was carried out in October, which confirmed no further importation had uh, taken place, but the material remained on land, and the enforcement notice had not been fully complied with. Uh, the um, CPA have continued uh, to conduct unannounced site monitoring, um, and unauthorised development has not recommenced. So just to give you some more visuals, so this this is sort of uh, 2022 from the sort of gate entrance, um, and then sort of how the land looks. So it's sort of mainly overgrown with vegetation, but there has been no further importation. Um, and then to date, just to give you the up to date one, so this is uh, January 23 again, um, and again sort of, sort of there. So. That's how, how the land looks. Um, in terms of um, recent checks again, so 23, 23, the, the checks have shown that the land still remains uh, unregistered. Um, and following uh, currently pla uh, planning authority investigations uh, have no information to suggest that the individual who claims ownership of land is not or at least part owner. Uh, the individual is not believed to have financially benefited from this. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, potentially was misled by others. Uh, I have made a, a reference to the circumstances of the individual uh, within the report, um, and therefore it is questioned if prosecution is appropriate. Uh, therefore, uh, the recommendation is that no further action is taken uh, by the county planning for at this time uh, in respect to the breach of planning control and the extent enforcement notice relating to no further, subject to no further importation taking place. Uh, the enforcement notice will remain on the land and uh, subject to the land uh, being sold or formally registered to a landowner. The CBA will work proactively towards compliance with the, uh, the notice. Thanks so much indeed, uh, Sean, for um, uh, presentation and to explain the situation as it is. Uh, just before I go to members, one question is, if the land gets sold with the, with the enforcement notice on it, do the county council get automatic notification, or how does that work? How do you become, you know, how do you find out whether it's been sold? Uh, I mean, I think generally we would, would, would obviously keep a monitor on, on, on this generally anyway. Uh, obviously, there's delays generally within town systems, etc. Uh, but we will we'll be keeping an eye on, on, on this and going forward. Yeah, sorry, what usually happens is obviously a solicitor that would do a land search for a prospective we'll buyer, that. Uh, that solicitor may approach ourselves as the planning authority and ask for some further information in respect to the enforcement notice. That doesn't happen. We've had buyers come forward uh, as well to ask what our position would be in terms Ooh. of enforcing that. That, that notice if they purchase the land and then we can enter a negotiation, right. probably bring the case back to committee and look for a resolution to, to move forward. OK, members, I've got Councillor Stepdown and Councillor Fenman. Just picking up on the officer's point there, um, yes, solicitors don't always ask the right questions when they're doing searches. come across that quite frequently. Is it possible to register with the land, uh, land register that we have an interest in it? So when it does come up, it flags it up? Somebody, um, Sean? Yeah, do you want, do you, yeah, sorry, um, not necessarily with the land registry because that will go on, that goes on the deeds. We don't, we don't do that, but we have a, under planning law, we have to put um, enforcement notices that we serve on what you call the planning register. Cool. So any, any solicitor would normally look at that planning register to see what um, any applications granted enforcement notices and other planning matters that rest with the land. So a section 106 agreement, things like that. Uh, uh, that rests with the land. So we have a duty to do that. That goes on the planning register. The planning register is held by the district council uh, and it gets revealed that way. Yeah, it, it, it still concerns me that... You can get three slightly different answers here. So, um, so I don't call it the planning register. I call it the local land charge register. Land so when charge. you do a search, uh, yeah. it comes up with all the entries, uh, which it says yeah. Section 278, all the other things. So remember, we're sending them to the district councils when we issue just an enforcement notice, actually. And that goes on there. And then, obviously, someone has direct notice um, if they've done the search. If they don't have to... If they don't actually do a search, then they have um, they have constructive notice because it was actually registered. The, the, the Essex districts are now currently in transition to uh, land registry for searches. I think Colchester went end of uh, end of March. Epping's just going. I think the others will be. But my understanding is the process from the purchaser side looks essentially the same. So we'll carry on 
making sure those details are on there. Does that still rely on the solicitor asking the right question? No, it's it, it, you ask the question, what's on the register? Okay. And it comes up with everything that's on the right. register. If you ask it in relation to the wrong bit of the land, yes, admittedly, it won't yes, show okay. up. Okay, I'll so, so they have to, on, on agricultural land, you would usually put a, a line around it. So if they ask for just a small bit, it won't come up. So we can basically uh, register an interest, if you like. Yeah. Yes. Okay. At the end of the day, it's all how good the solicitor is, isn't it? And you, yeah. you just referred to that. And we have had cases where somebody's purchased land and not known about um, any restrictions that might be on that piece of land. Well, that's not how. Councillor Fleming, more than once. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Sean, when the individual came to County Hall, were they not able to provide hard copy of the title deed? Um, not to my knowledge, I think there were some issues there. Um, obviously, well, I wasn't here at the time, but I think um, I think with that, all we've got is obviously the fact that the land's unregistered with the land registry and, okay. and remains so. Okay, so we have a recommendation to uh, uh, take no action this present time. Uh, can, would someone like to propose that? Councillor Harris and Councillor Garner is seconded. Uh, go to the vote. All those in favour, the show. Yes, unanimous. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, members. Uh, we'll now go to uh, uh, 6.2, which is enforcement of uh, planning um, control update. Uh, uh, Sean, over to you again. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, other than what is listed, I've got nothing further to add than what's stated in the report, unless members have any questions. I've got to say, you must have wielding a magic wand there somewhere <laughs> online to uh, decrease the cases in the way that you have. So, uh, big well done to you. Councillor Jowles. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good report. I mean, it's the clarity of it tells us exactly what we want to know, just what we need. And coupled to that, once we go to uh, 6.3, 4 and 5, uh, the, uh, I like the fact that you, you actually put the enforcement cases as they are and around in total, which is, makes a very, very good informative uh, why and whilst we're on six, three, four, and five, as we've gone by default, well done to the team for 100 percent performance uh, right through the three periods, um, by the four periods, because it was the uh, March one as well, didn't it? Uh, excellent. Uh, if any member has any uh, concern to like to raise on 6.2, I'm sure that Sean will be happy to deal with it uh, outside of this. Uh, we'll go to six, uh, agenda item seven, date of next meeting, which is 26th of May. I will assume that the uh, Bentley School will come back to that committee date. Up to the applicant to uh, uh, figure out if they're able to be. Agenda item, can to step down. Chairman, just before you close the meeting, I was going to ask whether it is possible, uh, a number of items have come up through our discussions around policy and the concerns of whether policies can work or whether they need to be updated. Can we, how can we feed that back into the system? Your best way is to put a motion forward with full council. Okay. And I believe that bench committee. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. another, another that's round. Another I round. wondered whether there is a process for this committee to put back suggestions into the process. Well, I think the formal way to do that is to uh, uh, get administration on board, first and foremost, really. Uh, whether we want to update planning policies, uh, Richard, do you want to...? Uh, no, I'm not necessarily going to talk about that, because that, um, you know, we, we're feeding as professionals into local plans and advising on things like walkable neighbourhoods, sustainable transport policy, you know, trying to factor in designing master plans to try and get people out of the cars. Um, that, that, that's the position. Uh, if I, um, I think as a first move, what I'll try and do is I'll put the feelers out and see if I can organise with the chairman's consent a next member training session on ECC's uh, approach to, um, I did make a note, sort of school transport policy. Um, if I can get a brave enough person to come and speak to you. Gene hat required. Yeah, that particular subject. And then I think that, you know, that... You know, the feedback there, we, we, I've personally been involved in this for years. It's what happens on the ground versus what we're trying to do in terms of policy and whether that can work or, or not. Um, 
and it, it, is, it is extremely difficult, isn't it? We need to get people out of their cars driving, you know, 200 yards down the road to, uh, to drop their children off when... Councillor yeah. Wagland could come and yeah. educate us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if I, if I put the feelers out for the next training session and see if we can get somebody to come and talk to you about, about that, that might be, <coughs> really be very helpful. I think we must also be very aware that this committee is the only quasi-judicial committee the council has, and therefore we constrain or we can and cannot do, yeah. and we're regulated by policy, which is then uh, must be reflected in either in NPPF or in the local plan. Now, the one thing that most districts we have is a local plan committee, which could introduce policy. As County Council does not have a local plan committee, and most of us have been about for long enough to understand that the system works. So, I think we leave it in the capable hand of Richards uh, to uh, to progress to do some informal conversation first. But I think you've picked up most of the. Things. Uh, the one action point is that I will be writing to the uh, applicant about the school and raise those points, and I'm sure that uh, uh, the relevant cabinet members will be also copied into that because it's important that we get that buy-in. Um, yeah. So before I actually go to eight and nine urgent and exempt and non-exempt business, uh, I was going to ask members about, as I mentioned before, what topics of training you would like to kind of be included. I think we picked up a couple today. One is on policies of walking to school and drop off and things that come, and the other is on design. I think the last, I was trying to wrap my brains when we last had the design session, it was before the pandemic because we're in committee room five and we had uh, a very good team of the um, uh, design team that came along and they were truly quite taken back by uh, the feelings of members. So we've not had a session on, uh, on design ever since this committee was set up. So <laughs> you, you, somehow you managed them to come to come, come along and they came back for another session as well, didn't they? Which was quite unbelievable. So well done to you, Richard. So if you can magic that again that would be very useful is there any topics anybody i don't expect you to tell me today but if you give us some thoughts and email me emma richard so we can actually include them in the program and can i last thank everyone for having turned up or having contacted me about the training last last week you know much better attendance thank you very much indeed so no further ado i've closed the meeting it's been quite long today but uh, very very useful and i will circulate what we put together to write to uh, 